these bills are consistent with the sustainable goals which we are so signatories to in the UN, SDG 11 for sustainable cities and communities, SDG 9, industry, innovation, and infrastructure, and particularly for the use of non-motorized modes of transportation, um, SDG 3, good health and well-being, SDG 7, affordable and clean energy, SDG 13, on climate action. Uh, like I said, the, the, the timing is, is um, the timing wouldn't be any better. Uh, this is something that we want to happen for many, many years, maybe decades. But now we were forced to look at this issue in the eye because when we went in a lockdown mode, uh, our frontliners had to get to work, and it was a a uh, what do you call it? an organic reaction that uh, the mode of transportation used was biking. Uh, some also resorted to walking, but obviously biking can get you further. And so this has now been already part of our new normal. But the concern is that when we slowly ease into um, the use of uh, public transportation and there will be more cars on the road, will we be able to retain the use of these roads as bike lanes? So this is really why this... Um, Bill and these bills are quite urgent right now. Uh, I'd like to also point out that um, we have we invited, we tried to invite as many of the advocates as uh, we have contact with, and all of you will be given a few minutes to speak. I ask that we keep in mind that the objective would be to allow everyone to speak. Yesterday, uh, I had another hearing on the future of education, and because it was a session day, uh, I was constrained to end the hearing by 3 p.m., so not everyone was able to speak. I have a little bit more time today, but I need everyone's cooperation to keep your statements short and concise, so exact, so precisely we can have, we can give everyone uh, the opportunity to speak. Um, one last thing I also want to mention is that uh, uh, I wanted the advocates uh, to know that um, these discussions have been ongoing. Uh, with a lot of um, agencies of government. I'm sure the agencies that we have called on to, to speak today will also confirm that. Um, so I have received texts. I have been tagged in uh, uh, social media platforms asking me to do something. And I tried as much as I could to report that, yes, we are. Uh, sometimes we don't, we don't announce everything that's going on, um, but we have been working on this for at least six weeks, probably close to two months already. So um, I hope that uh, makes everyone just as excited as me. So I think um, that's it. May I ask everyone to turn off your um, uh, microphone so that we can, uh, uh, all our uh, attention will be on the speaker. Um, and then if you need to, as much as possible, let's refrain from making comments, pero if you really, you can use the chat box to uh, make note of comments. And obviously, if I, if I get a chance to acknowledge someone in the process, I'll try. But really, the idea is to uh, allow the speakers to make their statements and to continue um, to, to um, move along with the, with the number of uh, resource persons that we have. So before I call on the new speaker, the next speaker, Give me a second. I am just checking with my staff. All right, um, let's proceed. Uh, the, first will, the first to pre pre present will be um, from DOTR, that is Asex Swan Singh. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure. Asex Swan Singh and, or is it Asex Mark De Leon? Okay, I'm sorry if I mixed up your titles. I'm not sure if. Albert Swansing is engineer Swansing and also an asset. 
uh, because in one of my notes it says ASEC Swansing. Okay, anyway, so ASEC Raymond De Leon and Engineer Swansing. All right, so you have the floor, and then to follow would be um, I believe it's MMPA if they're already present. So, Department of Transport, please take the floor. Yes, uh, good afternoon, uh, Chairman uh, Pia Cretano. Um, and go, good afternoon to the rest of our colleagues here in government and uh, stakeholders, uh, non-government uh, organizations. Uh, the Department of Transportation fully supports the bill of uh, the Senate, uh, including uh, bills to promote environmentally sustainable transportation. So as early as 2011, the DOTR has already set the policy framework for environmentally, environmentally sustainable transport. And in fact, uh, that uh, framework developed a toolkit for government agencies, including local government units, to promote and ensure environmentally sustainable transport in their planning and implementation of projects. Under that uh, environmentally sustainable transport framework, we have uh, identified thematic areas where uh, government agencies and local government units can work on. No? We should see environmentally sustainable transport as a, a holistic and a comprehensive approach. We cannot just focus on one aspect alone, for example, biking, without realizing how to improve land use planning, without improving transportation planning and the capabilities of the local government units, including other government agencies. So, uh, as I said, uh, environmentally sustainable transport should be a holistic and comprehensive approach. We have already identified thematic areas such as environmentally uh, uh, improving emission standards of vehicles, improving transportation planning capabilities, improving travel demand management, improving land use planning in our local government units, improving road safety as well. So as I said, it's a multi-dimensional uh, aspect and uh, we should work forward as a government to realize environmentally sustainable transport in the Philippines. In Lampo, Madam Senator. Thank you. Thank you for your very concise statement. And I want to take note of what you said because um, I am one of those bike advocates, but I always try to temper no, the passion that I hear and feel among my fellow bike lovers. Now, it cannot happen without this kind of coordinations. No? So, when, uh, especially during this time na alam kong very proactive ang uh, DOTR, ang uh, MMDA ngayon dito sa panawagan natin na now is the time to put the bike lanes. And you are looking at all these other aspects, which gives me much delight to have this hearing. But I, I really wanted to emphasize this with our advocates kasi um, in as much as we want to dedicate uh, how many meters of, uh, or and kilometers, meters wide and then kilometers long, of bike lanes, it's the job din naman of the OTR to ensure that uh, all the other modes of transportation, and in particular, the sustainable modes, are put into place. No? So thank you for that. And later on, we can go into more details. As I know, you have already, I've been in a number of presentations with you already. Um, thank you. Let's proceed to MMDA. Um, I believe it's USEC, um, FRISEC, uh, Frisco San Juan, uh, Deputy Chair of MMDA, who will present. Tama ba? And then just to be ready after that, uh, urban planning and transport expert, Julia Nebriha and uh, Robert Anthony C. So MMDA. Good afternoon po, uh, good senator and uh, other uh, members. Uh, we are in full support of, of the bill spending in the Senate, no? particularly on, on the uh, promoting and recognizing bicycles as an alternative mode of transportation and for other purposes, which is authored by the good Senator Pia Cayetano. Uh, we would like to uh, emphasize, however, that uh, safety is also of prime importance and therefore uh, it is with uh, very much concern on our part that uh, we provide uh, good safety measures no, in, in, in uh, the bill spending in, in, in the Senate and in, and in Congress. And uh, one uh, particular area that uh, 
we can also look into it, are the problems encountered by bikers, particularly, for example, uh, on environment, which is uh, also one of the uh, concerns of the, of the bill spending in Congress, because many bikers, particularly women, are uh, not uh, receptive to riding a bike because of the smoke coming from uh, smoke belchers. And number two, uh, the weather. Uh, so these are, are, are things that uh, we also have to look into. And uh, of course, uh, if we can find uh, solutions to these problems, I'm sure many people in urban areas would prefer riding bicycles than taking uh, uh, other modes of transportation because uh, it would be more convenient uh, to ride the bikes from your home. It, it means it gives you a chance to go point to point no? from your home to your destination. And uh, one last thing is uh, we would like to uh, look into the uh, a way of uh, providing incentives for bikers, no? incentives from the government or incentives from their uh, employee, employers rather. Uh, maybe the good senator can also uh, find uh, some uh, uh, suggestions uh, from among the bikers or or the employers, the uh, business establishments on uh, these areas to provide incentives for uh, bike riding employees and workers. Uh, that's all, Mr. Senator, Ma Madam Senator. Sorry. I remind everyone that the bills on hand are both the general bills, the all-encompassing bills on sustainable transportation and the bills uh, creating bike lanes, no? the use of bicycle and bike lanes. So we can still have a TWG where we can go into the details. It's, suffice naman, it, it's sufficient for me right now that uh, you show your general, you, you express your general position in, on it and any general concerns like you mentioned, safety, pollution, uh, valid naman po talaga lahat yun. But Again, just to remind everyone here, this is not so about sustainable transportation, the whole picture. And uh, in particular, my, my bills both uh, specify um, non-motorized non transportation. And that actually includes walking. That is considered uh, generally as a non-motorized way of transportation. Walking is. Um, maganda ho yung comment ninyo, Yusek, about uh, the concerns that some people have, although I will just say na hindi lang siguro concern ng babae yon concern naman ng lahat, baka, sa, baka babae yung mga narinig yung very vocal about it, but both would be concerned naman about uh, pollution and uh, about the health effects, and pati naman sa init, kasi hindi lang naman comfort yung init, pero it could also be a health issue, di ba, pag sobrang init. And that is also why um, I want a more uh, detailed discussion in the technical working group or later on if we have time because there's another bill which I will ask my team to see if there's a way we can consolidate is ito yung mga walkways kasi yung sustainable transportation bill ko may kasama din po yan walkways eh, including covered walkways. So if our studies would include how many millions of people live how many kilometers lang naman from their place of work? Kung 2 to 3 to 4 kilometers lang yan, kaya naman talagang lakarin yan. Naka-exercise ka na, nakarating ka pa dun sa papasukan mo na walang gastos. But we have to be able to support them with the right infrastructure. Number one, yung safe sila. Number two, eh kung pwedeng mga covered, ano yan, covered walkways, kung pwede pang air condition, why not? Diba? But it all boils down to being able to get the right numbers, uh, the data, so that we can make the proper planning, di ba? So, sa inyo na po yan manggagaling, so yun po yung request ko na whatever data you have, baka we, you can share that, if not towards the latter part of the hearing, in a technical working group after this. All right? So, on that note, let me call on uh, Julia Nebriha, Chief Operating Officer of Philippine-Japan Initiative for Clark. Thank you so much, Madam Chairman. I'm just going to share my screen here. Um, for my for my presentation, I hope that it I hope that it works. <laughs> uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon to to everyone. Can everyone see my slides? Oh, yes, we can. 
Okay, great. So I'm just going to start off um, my presentation um, timing myself, but also with this uh, quote that what we are facing now as we look towards sustainable transport and especially as we look towards the uh, emergency pathways and safe ways proposed by the good Senator Cayetano, we're really looking at a street fight. It's a discussion about use of space. And Jenny Khan says, if you can change the street, you can change the world. And I think this is a very timely um, quote for us, especially in the post-pandemic context. A street is often thought of as a surface to move vehicles, but actually um, it, is a, it is a dynamic public place for, for all. It is where all of us um, are, can use to walk, to bike, to, to go to the grocery, um, to run errands, to play, to exercise, and especially in Philippine cities where we have very limited green public open spaces, the street tends to be um, the majority of our public open space and this is an image from from Tai Tai for instance but you just see that uh, the street is really majority of, of where we can access uh, for for everyone in a city so it's the most equitable it's the most inclusive space that we have in our city which is very important as we focus on the sustainable development goals right now in this crisis is when we really need to be um, focused on transformation on a wide scale immediate and bold and we can do this by giving space back to back to people and we can do this by reducing speeds designating spaces and also restricting through traffic and i'd like to share some examples from the newly released uh, streets for pandemic response and recovery. Um, this is a resource that was developed by the National Association of City Transportation Officials. Um, they are also responsible for the global design street guidelines and urban street design guidelines that can be found online. And they specifically came up with this, this uh, reference to help cities like us be able to respond quickly in the pandemic. So one of the interventions is a bike and roll lane and critical here that you see is dedicated space within the roadbed so this is not a painted line on a sidewalk this is an extension of the public space into the into the roadway and this is done with clear markings barrier treatments buffers and signage and we see this already being practiced globally by a lot of cities. Um, here's an example from, from London, for instance. Uh, the UK has dedicated £2 billion for active mobility. In Paris, they've added 650 kilometers of emergency lanes. And again, very simple, barriers, um, cones, and um, lane markings. Bogota, already very famous famous for its ciclovias, added an additional 117 kilometers of expanded lanes. And also Berlin has been doing pilot projects with uh, the installation of barriers. And also, if you notice here, the X's um, to help keep the social distancing um, aware awareness among the bicycle users. We also have to extend our sidewalks. Um, where we do have sidewalks, if they exist, they are very narrow and it's not sufficient, especially given high foot traffic in some areas. And the fact that sidewalks are used not just for as a footpath, but for queuing for uh, storefronts and essential services. Um, this can be done by, again, extension into the, the roadway and clear markings and pedestrian protection. We have examples from Milan, simple painted structures, as well as from Vancouver, where you have more of the um, barriers. Again, this is being done for immediate relief to people, um, while we have to have time, of course, for the longer infrastructure plan of actually extending the sidewalk beyond 1.5 meters. Um, and then, of course, we have something called the slow street. This is where you have um, barriers at the beginning of the street with signage, um, traffic calming measures to reduce the speed to 10 kilometers per hour, which is the speed of the slowest person on the street, the pedestrian, to make sure that everybody can access it, but in a very safe manner. So here you would be able to have residential access, but you would restrict through traffic. This has been piloted and already proven since 1987 in Barcelona with the Superblock and has been very, very successful in adding public space where people live, which is of primary concern. You create that accessibility, you create that inclusiveness for everyone. Um, Vancouver is doing this with 50 kilometers of slow streets. Oakland is doing it with 119 kilometers of slow streets. Roads, roads closed to through traffic. 
very simple signage like this, local traffic only. And then um, this example, I'll end on this with, with Milan, is a people street. So you have no through traffic and you're just closing it. Um, this is a, a side street. This could be very prominent, for instance, on the local barangay roads. Um, we can see examples where we might be able to implement this very, very quickly. They've also committed 35 kilometers of emergency bikeways and reduced 60% of their streets to 30 kilometers an hour. So what are we going to do in the Philippines? This is the time to make very big commitments. We should say what we're going to do. We should release very, very specific guidelines. Um, not every bike lane is the same. And in order to make sure that it's safe, we should be able to have at least a minimum standards um, that can be released and be required so we ensure that we have the right type of infrastructure. And um, I believe Antoine will talk about this later, but the city of Pasig has already done this on various scales, car-free streets, pop-up bike lanes, moving towards the protected infrastructure. And when you're able to do this, you create an overall network. This is Milan's final plan. It's a network where you have the 15-minute city, you know, bike lanes, linked to slow zones in neighborhoods, livable neighborhoods, creating a resilient tomorrow. When the next flood comes, we're ready. When there's limited public transportation, we can walk and bike to any essential services that we need. In the next earthquake, God forbid, we will have spaces in our neighborhoods close to us where we can run to and be safe. So this is not just an investment in today. It's also an investment in our future. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Um, next, let me call on Robert Anthony C., Chief Transport Planner and Department Head, Pasig City Transport Development and Management Office. Um, thank you very much, Senator Pia. Um, to my colleagues in government, um, it's really good to see you again. Uh, many of you guys are, uh, have long been uh, good partners to the city of Pasig and working on transport. Um, I'd like to echo earlier what uh, Senator Pia said, that while we are um, this is certainly an, a big opportunity to remake our transport system. Maybe, um, if not the biggest one um, we've had in years to really make big improvements. But let's not forget that while every crisis brings an opportunity, we still have a crisis on our hands because of limited public transportation and um, various other um, restrictions related to social distancing. If we are not able to safely accommodate bikers on our roads and the inevitable, I think by now, everyone knows that there is an increase in demand for biking on our roads. Rather than having our people um, simply get sick and possibly um, die of diseases like COVID, I think if we are not able to, immediate, to immediately improve the safety for bikers um, and, and other forms of sustainable transport, then we will um, simply be replacing COVID deaths with deaths from road crashes and accidents and loss of life. So. The national government has previously asked cities like Pasig, LGUs, to invest in our bicycle infrastructure, and we've been doing that. Uh, we currently have five kilometers of protected bike lanes, uh, physically protected bike lanes, which aren't just paint, which have actual physical separators. This is um, a little less than what other countries in the rest of the world have, but we believe it's currently um, the leading number for the Philippines, uh, and we certainly uh, want to make more. In fact, Mayor Vico Soto recently uh, signed an executive order ordering uh, the city to create a network of bicycle lanes that will access, uh, a network of bicycle paths that will allow access to the entire city um, for all Pasigenos of all ages and abilities. So this is really what we have to have in mind when planning bicycle infrastructure. It's what we have in mind for Pasig. And let me just say that this, the LGUs of Metro Manila are incredibly interconnected. Uh, Pasig doesn't exist in a vacuum. We still depend heavily on the partnership and on the free movement our citizens have our Pasig residents have with the rest of Metro Manila. And in order for a bike network to really work throughout uh, the entire city, we need the national government to match the pace of the LGUs. The places where bike lanes are most needed, um, like Julia said, um, not every street will warrant the bike lane treatment, but it is impossible to have a citywide network of safe cycling lanes. We cannot give cyclists access to the whole city unless we can improve our national roads. This is why it's really important to, uh, for the national government to have a good plan for the bicycle lanes that connect to our local roads. For instance, in Pasig, uh, we, it would help us so much uh, if the national government also helped us create the network to link Ortigas Avenue, C5, Shaw Boulevard, and Pasig Boulevard with our network of bike lanes that we're building on local roads. And I think in this crisis we're in, um, we have an opportunity to do better. But unless we can create a safe network of cycling lanes, we don't have to debate the science anymore. 
The science for a safe cycling network has been proven for decades. And it's not just about bikes versus everything else. The science has also proven that when you have a network of safe lanes, of safe bicycle paths throughout the city, then it also improves outcomes for walking and public transport as well. These are complementary investments. Investing in one mode of sustainable transport does improve the other modes. But I think particularly right now with the collapse of public transport uh, capacity as a result of social distancing measures, the need to have high capacity, safe uh, cycling networks throughout all of Metro Manila is incredibly important. And I think we really can't waste this opportunity. Um, that's it for me. Um, thank you very much. and. Good luck, Senator Pia. Thank you very much um, for sharing what PASIG is doing. And I also appreciate that you mentioned that the uh, network and coordination between the Metro Manila mayors is really there. And I think you said it's there. they are incredibly connected. They are. So when I also hear comments, um, uh, uh, you know, I, I suppose most are well-meaning comments. Uh, about mag-usap naman kayo, nag-uusap po sila. They have regular, like, hanggang pataya na umagahan na meetings with the DILG secretary, with MMDA. Uh, it is happening. But, you know, this COVID is uh, something that shocked the world. And so, um, I know I know for a fact, because my brother is a mayor, and I am very close to a lot of mayors, they have long debates, and they also have... Um, uh, differences in opinions, but they are doing their best, and so far they have all come out with, uh, as far as I know, uh, united positions on uh, the final decisions that they make, precisely realizing that they are all interconnected. So, thank you for bringing that up, um, Robert. So, um, next online is um, Attorney Tony Oposa. Uh, I had mentioned earlier that I had worked with him uh, years back on the very first sustainable transportation bill that was fi that was ever filed in Congress. And um, Tony, I, I also witnessed uh, Tony's many uh, environmental, environmental uh, interventions. And uh, I was also present when he was awarded the well-deserved Ramon Magsaysay Award. So Tony, um, you have the floor. Uh, let me just mention pala, convener of Share the Roads Movement. Okay, go ahead. Ahil, they follow the one line, the principle of the act. Alalahanin nyo ho natin yan kasi that will come up in the solution. Can you, can you ano, Tony, excuse me, can you start yeah. from, can you start from the, from the very start? I, I don't know if it was my internet or baka hindi nakamute ka pa. Just start from the top again, please. Okay, can you hear me now? I am, yes. uh, I yes. am on, yeah, okay. So now. I will just ask you, sino ba, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear okay. you. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just asking, sino mas matalino? Ang langgam ba o ang tao? Bakit sa dami ng langgam, wala silang traffic? Kasi they follow a single line. That is called the principle of the ant. That is very important because that is the solution to traffic. Number two, ang karsada ba? Ilan ang Pilipino? 105 million. Ilan ang may kotse? Uh, mga dalawang million. O bakit lahat ng karsada binigay sa kotse, tapos, next slide please, tapos yung mga tao, wala man lang silang malakaran. So, that is very unfair. In, the, in law, it's called an equal protection of the law. So, yun ho ang basis ng road sharing movement. Sa Tagalog, bayanihan sa daan. Ang karsada, hati-hatiin natin, i-share natin, wag lang, wag lang uh, kunin ang ilang tao. So, paano ba yan? Okay, number one, yung mga gusto maglakad at gusto magbisikleta, atras mo muna. Yung mga gusto, uh, one, one slide back please. Okay, go. Sige, next. Okay, next slide. Next slide please. Yung kanina, okay. Yung mga gusto maglakad at yung may gusto magbisikleta, di bigyan natin sila ng daanan. Yung mga sasakyan naman, atras mo please. Atras mo please. Yung mga sasakyan naman, meron silang daanan na ganun. Diba? Nabanggit mo kanina yung si Ramon Magsaysay, he is known for saying that those who have less in life must have more in law. Abante mo please. Next slide. 
Next slide, please. Okay. Magsaysay say those who have less in life must have more in law. I-apply natin yan sa principle ng bayanihan sa daan na those who have less in wheels must have more in roads. Na kung wala kang sasakyan, ditibigyan ka ng daanan. Actually, hindi ho ito mong kahi. Nasa patas na ho ito, 2008 pa, but it was in the form of an executive order. Nung nagpalit ng executive, iba-iba na naman. But to the credit of MMDA, uh, DO Transportation, DPWH, panahong panipig, Singson, DOST, uh, inuumpisahan na namin itong road sharing exercises. We don't call it experiments. We call it road sharing exercises. Yung nakita nyo kanina ng may MMDA, Rojas Boulevard yan. So, uh, I took note of your ideas, of your mentions, uh, MMDA, matagal na ko tayong nagsama, DO Transportation, yung holistic at saka yung safety concerns. MMDA, Mr. San Juan, uh, kas kasangga po namin dito si, natin dito si Boyet Almadin. Okay? So, ginagawa na natin yan. Simple lang yun. Tingnan mo yung picture na yan. O, bakit mahirap? Okay, next slide please. Next slide please, okay. Yung public transportation, yung bus, yung high capacity bus, ngayon, half capacity na, pwede natin idugtong-dugtong yan sa isang marami ang laman. All of the principles, hindi tayo, o di ba? Sada. So, ano Kaya rin capacity na instead of 50, until 20, uh, pareho pa rin pamasak uh, 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 na lang ang umaandar, isang daan or 200 sakay. Sabihin nyo, ano lang yan, drawing, drawing. Next slide please. Yung jeepney, pwede bang ipagdugtong-dugtong yan? Pwede naman pala yan eh. Basta ang principle was the ad na magsusunod-sunod. I took that picture somewhere. That's a real, that's a real picture. Hindi ko yan, hindi yan Photoshop. Next slide, please. Oh, nung panahon nila Pinoy, sila si DOST Secretary Montejo, uh, gumagawa na sila ng ganyan. Ayan o, oh, ang ganda-ganda niyan. At saka ang mura-mura. It can be rolled out in one or two years and uh, it is about 10% the cost of this MRT thing. Bakit no, tapos nung nagpalit ang gobyerno, kinalimutan na nila, kinalimutan yan. So sayang lang, but that, those are the solutions. Next slide, please. Uh, in fact, kung susundin lang natin yung release, ng idea ng release at saka idea ng train, yung sasakyan na yan, dipidal yan, nandiyan si Gina Lopez, o oh, si pinagawa yan ni Ed Hagidorn, uh, 2007, 20 thereabouts, ginawa namin yan. So pwede pala, dipidal lang. Wala pang gasto, di ba? Oh, pwede naman pala. Next slide, please. Okay. Salamat sa inyo, Senator Spia, Ketano, Sunny Angara, Nancy Pinay, Grace Po. Kumusta mo ako, Sunny? Pia, kumusta mo ako, Sunny? Um, mabuhay kayo at binuhay niyo itong idea ng ating inumpisahan almost 10 years ago. Uh, the people still remember how you welcomed us, uh, Senator Pia, Nag-file kami ng kaso sa Supreme Court, nahatiin yung karsada, tapos uh, after the filing, pumunta kami dyan sa inyo. And our people really appreciated na sinalubong mo kami. Okay? So, uh, just very quickly, what are the kinds of roads? Sinasabi nila uh, national road, provincial road. No, there are only three kinds of roads. Arterial roads, which connect cities to one another. Collector roads, which feed into the arterial roads and the local roads, the roads that bring us to our homes. So, all planning for transportation must, that must be the basis for all planning for transportation, any transportation. Uh, so, alam mo, maganda yung idea ng bayanihan sa daan, yung word na bayanihan. Pinag-aralan ko yan. Ako po'y si Buano, kaya pinag-aralan ko anong ibig sabihin niyang bayanihan. Ang ganda pala ng ibig sabihin. Bayan, which means community and cooperation. Bayani, which means hero. And kung magbayanihan tayo, it is cooperative heroism. There is no such idea in the whole world. Uh, maraming salamat sa kanila, Senadoras. 
senador, senador, senadores, senadoras. Uh, but mas maraming, next slide please. Next slide please. But most of all, ang mas malaking pasalamat sa mga taong uh, to you, everybody. Uh, back please, back. Back. There. Dahil nasa sa atin hong lahat, lalo na kayong nasa gobyerno ngayon, nasa sa inyo ngayon, you still have probably 700 days more to go. Um, because remember that tayong ordinaryong tao, we are the source of all governmental power. And remember this line that the power of the people has more power than the people in power. Sinwerte tayo ngayon. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Sinwerte tayo ngayon that we have enlightened leaders in the form of Sunny, in the form of Pia. Sama mo na rin sila si Francis, sila si Frank, sila si Ma'am Cynthia, sila si Migs. Sabihin mo, binanggit ko sila. At saka yung MMDA, DNR, DILG. Uh, DO Transportation, DPWH. Maganda yung samahan natin. Kaya si, si uh, Mark Villar ngayon dyan. Uh, sa NEDA. So, our wishes that you are all, you and your families are all safe, healthy, and happy. Next slide, please. Ito ngayon, ang nagkalintik-lintik nating mundo. Anong gagawin natin? Next slide, please. Sa June 6, ganito bala ko. Uh, kung sino man sa inyong gusto, tayo, Senator Pia, kung pwede tayo pumunta dyan, gayong traffic na yun, gagawin natin ganito, yung kalahati ng karsada, exercise lang muna, subukan natin how it will look like. It's a road sharing exercise. So let's see how it can, how it works. Di ba? So the, the best thing to, to do something is to start doing it. Kaya nung nakita ko sa yung mga pictures ngayon, ginawa na namin yan nung panahon ni Ni sila Babe Singson pa, sila si Murph Carlos, uh, FD, uh, G, uh, ano nyo, uh, chairman ng MMDA. So, let's see how it can work. And, sige, next slide please. So, take home messages. Number one is, those who have less in wheels must have more in roads. Number two, the time for talk is over. Sampung taon na ito, Pinag, pinagsisipagan ni Senator Pia. Siguro naman, gagalaw na ito ngayon, lalo na may kasama na tayong, marami na tayong kasama. At uh, tawag nila, magbayanihan tayo sa daan. Maraming salamat, magandang hapon sa inyo lahat. Thank you very much, Attorney Tony Oposa. Oo, hindi na lang tayong dalawa. Actually, yung marami naman nating kasamang advocates, matatagal na rin sila dyan. Pero nahirapan tayo with other agencies. Eh. So now, uh, I think pas marami tayo. Can I just get a very quick response from BOTR? Because um, I noted the slides of Attorney Oposa included the BRT. Tagal na namin yun, yun yung katalagang model namin sa sustainable transport. Can I can I get BOTR um, engineer Bert uh, Swansing to make a, a can you react about uh, any plans for um, uh, bus rapid transit, please? Sorry, uh, just yeah, I, yeah. Uh, uh, Doc, Doc Tony Dance, um, one minute lang, I'll just let Ano react, no? So, um, ASEC, ASEC ba? Tama ba ang title mo? ASEC or are you a consultant? Sorry, I'm not quite sure. One thing, first one thing. Consultant po of DOTR. Ah, there, okay. Oh, sige. Um, Engineer Swansin, can you please um, briefly react about the uh, uh, idea of a bus rapid transit? Well, as far as uh, EDSA is concerned, I hope you, you have noticed uh, what we're doing right now uh, along EDSA. We have set up barriers already. Uh, what we intend to do is uh, the bus lane from the uh, curb side to the MR side, no? Yes, yes. Uh, to the MRT side. Now, what we intend to do is uh, run 500 buses uh, along EDSA. That will uh, we call that EDSA loop. We will just uh, run along EDSA 
uh, all the way from Monumento down to Molo Asia. So, yan, yan ang ginagawa namin. So, ano priority na rin po to, engineer? Priority to? Opo. Opo, priority po yan. It's happening Sige. now. Uh, Sige. Okay. The June 1st, uh, how many kilometers? How many kilometers ang ipo cover natin initially? 24 kilometers po yan, uh, from end to end. Okay, 24 kilometers in, of EDSA. Medyo mahina lang mo yung audio nyo, so I'm repeating what you're saying so everybody else can hear it. So 24 kilometers, that's basically EDSA pa lang muna. Tama ho ba? Opo. Tama po. Okay. I'm I'm excited ab- I'm excited about that kasi matagal ko na rin inaantay yan pero baka pwede rin natin na pag-aralan yung ibang lugar katulad ng C5 dahil yung Taguig City po nah- nahahati yung isang main barangay niya which is BGC which is uh, uh along with a few other cities in the country is the heart of our um, uh business centers no nahihiwalay kasi yung barangay na yon the rest of Taguig so we need um, C5 to be part of the network, not just of BRT, but also for bicycling and uh, uh, other roadways. I was going to actually message you, Julia, about it. So, naging public na itong uh, statement ko on the need to connect the rest of the gig via C5 to BGC. Hmm. Okay, yeah, yung picture. All right, so nakita nyo na yan. Thank you. Thank you, engineer. Um, let me now give the floor to Dr. Tony Dance. So good afternoon, everyone. Can can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Senator Pia and uh, other uh, attendees for this hearing. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present uh, the health aspects. I'm just wondering if my screen is showing, Senator Pia. Ah uh, no, it's your face that we see. Oh no, that's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the painting, the beautiful painting of your mother, I believe, behind you. <laughs> so we need enough. some content. Okay, <laughs> there's the saving grace. Can you see the slide? Wala pa. No. Why, uh, what, Senator, can you send yeah, it to maybe, my staff? And I'll have them yes. load it. I'll have one more yes. speaker, and then where can we do that? Okay. Sayang naman yung ano mo. Okay. Yung, yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Thank okay. you. So let me call on the next speaker, Muna, while while my staff helps you load the ano uh, the material. Um, Mr. Jed Carlo Ugay. He is the Chief Mobility Officer of Alt Mobility Philippines Move As One Coalition, and he is uh, with the uh, Zax. I hope I pronounce your name right, Zax. Abraham, also of the as one coalition. Please uh, take the floor, Mr. Uday. Opo, uh, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Maraming salamat po, Senator Pia, for giving us, the stakeholders, uh, the opportunity to give our voice today. At maraming salamat din po sa pinasa niyo for safe uh, bike pathways. Uh, talaga pong na-appreciate namin yun. So now I will try to share my screen. Um, please let me know if uh, you can see my screen. Nakikita niyo na po? Yes. Okay. So, um, ngayon po, I will discuss briefly the urgency of creating safe corridors for work, for walking and cycling. So, nabanggit na po ni Sir Tony Apo sa kanina po na mas marami po ang mga households na walang sasakyan. So, only 12% of households own a car in greater capital region according to JICA study and therefore 88% of households do not own a car. And uh, as part of MUBAS One Coalition, we want to prioritize people mobility over vehicle mobility. Chinect din po namin dito sa JICA study, uh, tinawag nilang MUSEP study, na um, dun po sa chart on the left, most of our trips are done by either public mode or active transport. Mode. So 20% lang po of trips are done through private mode, meaning privatong sasakyan, motorsiklo, or taxi, at uh, yun po. Uh, and therefore, pag kinumpute po natin, uh, currently po, according din po sa JICA study, na 35 million po ang trips within greater capital region, uh, 
14 million po pag NCR lang ang titignan. Kinumpute po namin dito po sa table on the right kung ilan po yung trips na kailangan na uh, ini-expect natin na si Serbia ng private mode at ng public mode plus active transport. So by June 1, kung ini-expect po natin na 30% of trips resume, uh, around 2.1 million private mode trips will go back uh, in the streets. And actually, we would need to serve around 8.4 million uh, trips for public mode and active transport. However, if meron pa rin pong uh, agam-agam sa pagbalik ng public transport at uh, wala na pong option ang mga tao, ang gagamitin po nila ay either walking and cycling, uh, which would be the only options for millions of Filipinos post-ECQ. At actually, nakita na po natin ito starting March uh, this year na marami na pong mas naglalakad ng ilang kilometro o nagbibisikleta na walang kilometro dahil wala po public transport. So if we expect to resume the economy partially on June 1, lalong marami pong mga tao ang walang choice dahil wala nga po silang pambili ng sakyan. At uh, ina-advocate po namin ang active transport as win for all solution dahil po sa numerous benefits na binibigay nito. Una po, uh, meron po itong health benefits na sigurado po alam na alam nyo na po, uh, meron po... Uh, Nare-reduce po yung risk of getting cancer by 45% and risk of heart disease by 46% if you use biking or active transport. And also, uh, biking is actually a better compliance to social distancing than motorized vehicles, especially for frontliners. Kasi po pag frontliner po, uh, baka mas exposed din po sila sa, let's say, sa COVID po. Pero kung nagbibisikleta po sila, mas uh, safe po sila in terms of spreading uh, and everyone else po na frontliner at tayo din po lahat. Next is environment safety. We know that biking and walking are zero pollution or zero carbon modes and therefore we should uh, support the use of this just to uh, reduce pollution and heat in uh, our city. So kung gusto po nating ma-enjoy pa yung zero pollution uh, na nakikita natin ngayon, eh wag na po or implement po natin ang promotion of bike and walking. And third is inclusive and efficient mobility. Bikes and walking and public transport can move more people with the same road space uh, than a uh, car lane. And fourth is road safety. Uh, we, if we can reduce the number of uh, vehicles on the road then and shift them to active transport, then uh, we will have reduced number of uh, incidents of road accidents. And lastly po, ang I think um, isa sa pinaka-important din is uh, avoid the impending economic crisis. Kasi if we want to restore the uh, travel demand of GCR, then uh, yung mga tao po na walang masakyan, ano po yung gagawin po nila? Kung ikaw po si Juan de la Cruz po, uh, kailangan nyo po na maglakad or magbisikleta kung wala pong public transport. And kung hindi nyo po yung gagawin, baka mawalan po kayo ng trabaho at uh, makaltasan. So potential result will be millions of GDP loss and rising income inequality. Dahil po yung companies, pag wala po yung trabahador nila, hindi makarating, then how can they produce the goods and services that they contribute to economy? So for urgent action needed, ang um, um, Aming uh, pinopropose po ay additional 10 billion budget po for allocation for walking and cycling as part of the COVID-19 response. It includes up to 1,600 kilometers of walking and cycling infrastructure and procurement of 100,000 bikes and bike racks uh, to jumpstart uh, the demand and uh, LGU and initiatives. Next po for immediate uh, action is to provide pop-up bike lanes and wider sidewalks on major roads with high foot traffic, particularly if we can provide on EDSA and other major roads. On the short term, meaning next week, solutions uh, is to identify network of streets to be designated as open streets, meaning walking and cycling only and close to motorized vehicles. Nag-touch po dito kanina si Julia about open streets concept. And on the medium term, meaning 6 to 12 months, to develop safe and white walking and biking infrastructure in every LGU 
following the guidelines, probably an ordinance from GALG uh, for all LGUs. And MMDA will help handle uh, Metro Manila. And lastly, uh, MMDA to coordinate uh, and create a Metro Manila wide network of safe bike lanes and pedestrian walkways. DOTR naman po for nationwide network. DILG to issue instructions to LGUs regarding provision of cycling and walking. And DPWH to utilize road funds uh, that they already have uh, to comply with the sidewalk guidelines of how minim what's the minimum width and also for bike lanes. So, yun po, maraming salamat po. Senator Pia? Thank you, thank you. Maraming salamat po, Senator Pia. Salamat din sa'yo, Chet. Um, I, let me ask if um, okay na yung slides ni, ano, ni Dr. Tony Dance? I sent it, okay, uh, so, Senator Pia. Wait, ha, my team, it's my team. Ayan, they're, they're still fixing it, Tony, so... Let me call on somebody else. Okay. Um, but before I go, no, um, okay. kay Jed, no, um, maganda rin yung slides mo, no. So can do you mind if we use it? Of course, we'll acknowledge you, no. But uh, in the next few, um, the next few speakers are all advocate groups. So I really feel that it's really important that we educate people some more. Um, a lot of people don't really understand this. Ang sa kanila talaga koche. Fact, the dream yata is to have a car. So I think there's a lot of education that we need to be doing um, in the days and weeks to come if we really want to be able to use this golden opportunity. Because I really feel so strongly we have to seize the moment and, and act now. Eh. Um, and then later on, the future, the, the next speakers can include it if you have something to say about this question I want to pose or I can call on anyone else. Um, meron ba sa inyo ang gumagawa ng training? Kasi uh, importante din yun. I noted in other countries, they do training. So, but before I, I go to the next speaker, I'd like to call on my colleague, si Senator uh, Francis Tolentino has joined us. And he is actually uh, the author of Senate Resolution 411, which calls on uh, the immediate um, establishment of bike lanes in Metro Manila. Uh, Senator Francis, would you like to make a statement? Um, we've been having a discussion for the past few minutes, but please uh, feel free to make a statement, ask questions. The floor is yours. Uh, I, I fully support the several initiatives filed by, by our colleagues, but uh, I, I have a question direct, direct to, directed to the MMDA. Kasi al alam, alam ko kasi yung MMDA nandiyan. Uh, a few years ago, Senator Kia, when I was MMDA chairman, I initiated several bicycle lanes within Metro Manila. We have one in Commonwealth Avenue. We have one in uh, Adriatico. We have one in Ruas, Ruas Boulevard. In fact, I still see the signages there. I think we have one in Edsa before, uh, from Magallanes uh, the way to Buendia, I think, or Ayala. And then we had several bike vans. And the Metro Manila Council, which I headed before, passed an ordinance. I'm so sure of this. And several guidelines came from MMDA. So I was I was thinking probably the MMDA personalities present and hearing me now, perhaps you can unearth some of the old files uh, which we did before. We implemented even an MMDA bike lane in, in Marikina. So nandiyan na yan eh. I, I, one question ko lang, kung nandiyan na DOTR and MMDA, uh, I, I read an article today that MMDA is apparently against the proposal to have pop-up lanes, although they, they started putting up some construct cone structures uh, a few days ago, and they're more for the elevated bike lanes. Maganda yun, pero matagal pa yun. Uh, matagal pang pangarap yun bago natin maitayo yung uh, elevated bike lanes coming from Ortigas all the way to Makati. Matagal pa yung construction yan. So tama yung narinig ko kanina, si Mr. Jed, uh, utilize existing uh, infra. Ayusin na lang kasi mababawasan yung, mababawasan yung mga bus. Luluwag siguro yung ibang uh, lanes na ginagamit ng pampublik kung sasakyan. And this, and this can be utilized by uh, the bikers. So I'm with you. Uh, Senator Pia in this endeavor, pero sagutin ng MMDA, nasaan na yung ano nangyari na doon sa mga ordinansa na pinasa dati? Ano nangyari doon sa mga bicycle lanes na nung panahon ko pinagawa? At uh, buhay pa naman, nakikita ko yung sa Adriatico. So it's just a matter of utilize, reutilizing it and then 
on the part of the OTR and MMDA, ano ba talaga yung gusto nyo? Uh, yung gagastos pa o oh, tama yung kaysa na torpia? We have to seize the moment, seize this opportunity na pwede na talagang ilunsad itong napakagandang uh, pangangailangan ng ating mga kababayan. Da dalawang question lang po, Senator Pia. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Thank you Senator. Um, Tolentino, may I call on MMDA, Yusek uh, San Juan? Can you respond to uh, Senator Tolentino's question on uh, yung, yung mga tungkol sa nagawa sa MMDA, yung kanilang mga materialis at gamit? And then later on, um, ASIC Mark, uh, DOTR, yung question din niya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, good afternoon po, uh, Senator Francis Tolentino. Yun pong mga bike lanes na nagawa noon, they are operational po as of the moment. In fact, meron pa pong mga additional na we were supposed to continue pero naabutan po ng COVID. Uh, mga additional bike lanes po yan. Uh, and we will resume uh, construction of these additional bike lanes po as soon as uh, GCQ is... Uh, uh, proclaimed no, uh, for, for NCR. And uh, yung pong uh, tungkol dun sa mga pop-up uh, bike lanes, we are not totally against po. Uh, we are just concerned po no, about the safety. But uh, since uh, uh, we have tried this already on an experimental basis, no, uh, we believe that maybe we can proceed no, uh, on an experimental basis pa, pa rin until uh, a more permanent uh, infrastructure no, will uh, be in place. Pa. So, uh, you section one, uh, uh, with the permission of uh, Senator Pia, you section one, hindi lang po yung uh, sinasabi ko na yung existing na iba, pero ang sinasabi ko kanina, may mga ordinansa na ito, may ordinansa ang Marikina, may ordinansa ang Pasig, uh, kami noon, si Mayor Bistik pa, nagbisikleta pa kami sa Commonwealth, eh, coming from the University of the Philippines, May mga existing ordinances na sana ma mahukay niyo po yan. At yun na lang po implement. Eh. You don't have to uh, mm -hmm. ask for ordinances again. And then, uh, follow up po doon, meron akong uh, ginawa no, ng mga bike vans. Malalaking container ba nito? I saw one in Cross Boulevard uh, ni Raha Sulaiman. Doon pwede silang mag-park kung, kung uh, well, problema kasi sa bisikleta minsan, yung parking, nananaka, doon sila pwede mag-park. At doon dati, nagpaparenta, nagpapahiram ang MMBA as an income generating project. Perhaps you can revive that as well. I'm, I'm uh, so sure that what we did before was not experimental. Kasi hindi lang ilang linggo yun, taon po yun. Taon po yun na ginamit. In fact, yung mga signages natin sa Rawas Boulevard, uh, buhay pa hanggang ngayon. So uh, I think we, we have to go away with, with that notion that what we are doing is just to uh, adjust, experiment, hindi na po, totoo na po ito. Uh, the new normal will will prod us to adjust and innovate. And, and utilization of uh, bicycles would probably be part of that uh, innovation. Salamat tayo, Sex and One. Thank you po, uh, Senator. Uh, very true po yung uh, ginawa nyo noon. Uh, it, was, it worked why, uh, well. And... Uh, uh, it's time now to really uh, focus more on, on, on uh, what uh, was done before. In mga ordinances po, uh, we will check with the uh, LGUs now uh, where what's the status right now, and we will give you uh, an update po. Salamat. Salamat. Po. Salamat. You said, uh, Thank you. Mark? Thank you. Um, before I, I give the floor to uh, you said Mark of DOTR, i just like to emphasize what Senator Tolentino said, no, na, um, tapos na yung time natin mag-experiment is we do not do this now and, and uh, pave the way for the permanent inclusion of non-motorized modes of, modes of transport. Again, I reiterate, it's not just biking, it's also walking. We will lose this opportunity. Alam na natin yan eh, mapupuno na naman ng mga bus, ng mga private vehicles, at kung ano paman, mahihirapan tayo to carve out our space. Right now, the COVID has, has like I said, organically, provided that space for bikes and walkers and other non-motorized forms. So, dapat hindi na yan mag-give up. Yun lang naman yung point ko eh. Kaya talagang ako, seize the moment. Huwag nyo na please bitawan. So, um, Mark, please. Um, well, I don't know if um, may sasagot pa ba kayo, uh, Yusek? If not, yeah. I'll give the floor na to Yes, go ahead. Yes. Um, on the part of uh, the OTR po, we are really seriously considering putting up uh, bike lanes, no? specifically along EDSA, where uh, 
the road uh, will allow it no uh, we are now in talks with the uh, MMDA para maka makapagbigay sila ng uh, guidance on uh, where possible maglagay nitong mga bike lanes na to and uh, makapag-extend now uh, kapag uh, mag-indefinite tayo diyan uh, the DOTR is already ready to buy this uh, bollards no uh, nakaplano na, na rin po sa amin na magkaroon kami ng emergency procurement to buy bollards para we will have uh, protected uh, bike lanes for uh, the bikers. So nakaready na po yan, Ma'am Pia. Um, we can uh, do the procurement, emergency procurement within this week. Oh. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for those clarifications. Senator Talentino, are you satisfied with the answer? We'll wait for the results, Ma'am. Okay. Um, <laughs> Alam mo, since Senator Tolentino is with us now, I'd like to reiterate din no, na kahit kami ay mga author nitong mga bills na pinapag-usapan, you don't need this to proceed. We really just want, uh, number one, I wanted to have a hearing to, so that this opportunity comes up na matanong natin ng diretso ang mga government agencies. Marinig din nyo from us as uh, advocates and legislators na ito yung intention. But I don't want to hear na, oh, hindi pa pumata, pumasang batas, ah, we can't do it. Hindi yun, ah. Um, this will, the, the, I've done this many times before. The purpose lang of this law is to institutionalize the practice, no? To support what we, what I believe these agencies are planning to do anyway. Yun lang yun. So tuloy-tuloy lang please kayo. Huwag niyong antayin to. Pero we will put this in place with your recommendations also how we can even further strengthen it, including sa budget, okay? Yun lang yung objective nun. Um, okay, so the next person, I'll call back uh, Dr. Tony Dance. So good afternoon, everyone. Can I have my slides? Good afternoon, Senator Cayetano and Senator Tolentino and everyone again. Uh, take two. I hope my slides show now. Okay. So I'm going to talk uh, very briefly on the health and healthcare impact, some obvious and some not so obvious uh, effects of uh, bike lanes uh, on our health. And some are chronic and some are uh, important for the current uh, tragedy or pandemic that we're facing. No? Next, please. So uh, if you can look at the top 10 causes of diseases, unfortunately, our latest data is 2015, 2016. Na wala nang infection dyan eh. Dalawa na lang ang natira, pneumonia, which is number four, and tuberculosis is number seven. And most of the diseases are chronic diseases. But we expect a resurgence of infections this year because of the COVID-19 crisis. Next, please. So those non-communicable uh, diseases um, cause uh, almost 500, more than 400,000 deaths a year. Uh, and people think that it's causing death uh, in the elderly and you know people who are expected to die anyway. Uh, but in fact, about one-third to one-half of these deaths occur in patients who are below 60, who are still part of our productive workforce. So next, please. And all these diseases are in some way related to uh, health and physical activity. Next, please. Attention. I'm co comparing Philippine data with an with urban data and I'm using the city of Manila as a representative. Uh, and if you look, hindi naman masyadong iba yung hypertension natin, no? Compared nationally. Next, please. Uh, but if you look at uh, the, uh, diabetes, no? Uh, it's about 30% uh, higher in urban areas like Manila. Next. If you look at uh, obesity, tingnan nyo yung obesity, 10%. Philippine average, 15% in urban areas like Manila. Next. Uh, also, uh, you can skip that, the smoking slide, please. Next. Uh, physical inactivity, to me, is very remarkably different. No? Physical inactivity, 40% national, but 53% in urban, an urban area like Manila. Next, please. So, ang tanong kasi, why don't people, people exercise? Why do they smoke? Why do they eat unhealthy? And the changing concept is that we usually blame people for not exercising. 
the changing concept is we smoke not because we want to smoke. We smoke because we're exposed to advertisements and to cheap tobacco. Next. Next, please. Uh, we eat unhealthy not because we choose that, but because unhealthy food is much cheaper than healthy food. Napakamahal po ng salad ngayon. Next. And why don't we uh, take active transport to work? Napaka simple ng dahilan. It's because we don't have a choice. Uh, because our streets are built for motorized vehicles. Next. So it's not a choice. It's how we build society. Ito yung dating ano, theory namin on how chronic non-communicable de diseases develop. On the right box, you see yung heart disease, stroke, cancer. In the middle, we see blood sugar, blood pressure, cholesterol, yun yung biologic factors. And we always blame that on behavior, our choices. We smoke, we don't eat healthy, we don't exercise, and we drink excessive alcohol. Next, please. The current theory is after trying to teach people all of this, they don't change their lifestyle. And the current theory is because our behavior is not shaped by what we know. It is shaped by how we build the environment. What we eat is shaped by our food price, by tobacco. If smoking is shaped by tobacco price. And active transport is shaped by access to open space. Next, please. So, uh, the, the prime example is yung tobacco, and you all know this already. Uh, maybe just go through that quickly. We try to teach people, next please, uh, to, to stop smoking, but they didn't from 1998 to 2008. Uh, next please. But when we increased tobacco taxes in 2012, uh, next please, current smokers went down from 31, and now we're 20%. And... Uh, Yung never smokers went up from 54 to 67%. By changing the environment, not by teaching people. Next, please. And so now is an opportune time to change that environment, to engage, encourage people to engage in active transport. This is how New York used to look like, parang almost same land area and population as Manila. Next. And I'm showing a picture of a very inspiring person. Next slide. Uh, Janet Kahn, who changed New York from what it appeared similar in the next slide to something like this. Uh, and transforming roads into road plazas where people can mill around and sit around and leading to a boom in small business income by as much as 50%. Because people, tayo crowded tayo in malls eh. No, actually, these streets streets are also places to walk in, to mill around, and to talk and socialize. And it's a safe place under the pandemic to socialize and in open air. Our concept was to build bike lanes a little at a time. Next, please. Loop by loop and improve these loops link by link. And uh, so my last uh, appeal is that when we build these loops, we think of the healthcare workers. Uh, healthcare workers are pretty, a pretty special situation when it comes to transport because people don't want to go near us. And we're cautious about getting too near people, especially those in the front lines taking care of COVID patients. So this look, uh, in that orange line is Taft Avenue and then the lower is Rojas Boulevard and the upper line is uh, United Nations actually connects four hospitals, Philippine General Hospital, Hospital ng Manila, Manila Doctors Hospital, and uh, Manila Medical Center. And we're proposing that since we are thinking of how to build this, maybe we can start in areas, uh, in hospitals, improving access, because PGH, for example, has now four, around 4,000 employees, and nearly a quarter of them are requesting bicycles for access to work. Because we're afraid to ride public transportation. Of the one 800 requests for bicycles, we've raised about 250 bicycles already. And now we need to provide a safe way, a safe haven that they can connect to. And this six-kilometer loop, uh, with this six-kilometer loop, the workers can be safe even way before they get to PGH and other hospitals. And if we build other hospital loops like this, 
uh, they can become the infrastructure for building bicycle lanes around uh, the metropolis and uh, other cities. And last slide, please. My last slide to summarize is the healthcare and uh, health problems addressed by biking lanes. Next, please. So there's hypertension and next, and diabetes, next, obesity. Uh, physical inactivity can be addressed and even a reduction in accidents. Uh, as shown in other countries, there's really a reduction in road accidents when you build safe bike lanes. Uh, this addresses cardiovascular diseases in general and non-communicable disease uh, as well. Uh, and then there are other benefits like air pollution, physically distanced transportation uh, during the COVID crisis. So it also addresses communicable disease as well. We don't like to use the term social distance because it encourages us to be you know, antisocial. So we, we use the term physically distanced. And it's very important for healthcare worker transport. We hope that the policymakers in the LGUs and in the executive branch of government give us an option to get to work safely during the COVID crisis and after. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Dr. For the information of uh, our um, guests who were not regular participants in our um, syntax hearing that Senator Francis and I went through a few months ago, uh, Dr. Tony Dance was very, uh, his input was very relevant also. And uh, I think that's important because sanay tayo na marinig sa mga tao na, eh, ganun lang eh, hindi mo mabago yung behavior eh. I I'm so used to hearing that. But one of the things I always point out is that when I'm abroad, uh, my first um, choice of transportation would be number one, walking. Number two would be biking, but it's not always that easy to find a bike din naman abroad. But number one would always be walking. And then second would be the MRT um, because they're very accessible. So that really that really is it's just a matter of it being available. And that's what I've always said. Um, for those of you who've heard me make the statement, um, I think uh, I was in the forum um, organized by Biking Advocates last Saturday. Uh, sabi ko, um, yung dream ko is I can, ano, I can uh, commute, either kum, kahit pa nga commute, eh, commute um, by, by a reasonable mode of transportation to the Senate. But it's impossible kasi from where I live, uh, I will walk, I will take a jeep, I will take a bus, and another jeep. Parang ganun eh, hindi accessible yung Senate. Uh, where it currently is, although nabanggit nga, nalilipat ng Senate sa Taguig, so magiging accessible na yan by PNR. But um, that, in a nutshell, is are the issues that DOTR and MNDA also have to resolve, di ba? Hindi lang naman yung bike lane, pero yung interconnectivity, and then like Dr. Dan said, talagang making this available so that people would um, automatically use these alternative modes and make it the main mode. So, um... The next person now would be um, Kaisha Mayuga, Environmental Planner, Founder of Life Cycles Philippines. Hello. Hi, um, everyone. Thank you, Senator Pia, for giving us this platform to really address something that I feel is an emergency, really, um, especially since we are going to into GCQ soon. And um, I, I'm really personally, I'm afraid <laughs> of what will happen. Uh, so let me just share my screen. Um, can everyone see this? Yes? Okay. No? Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so everybody has been talking about metrics now, but um, what I think um, some of you might be missing is really seeing how it affects just the ordinary Filipino or our frontliners. So. Um, I'm here to talk about why bike infrastructure is essential for navigating through this pandemic. So let me start with a story. This is Ryan, Ryan Lorente. He's one of the many nurses and frontliners working throughout the ECQ. He received an urgent call to administer a vaccine for a newborn baby who ran the risk of being exposed to more infection if brought to the hospital. After being lent a bike by a private citizen online, Ryan biked to the baby's family and he was able to promptly administer the vaccine, potentially saving the baby's life. He is just one of the many frontliners who have benefited from cycling as a means to commute during this pandemic. 
In reality, many essential workers from the start of the ECQ period until now are unable to get to work humanely. Some of them spend three to four hours walking home after a long shift, only to come back as long as they've been working. Um, cycling has been the solution for a lot of our frontliners, and it's not just happening here. Globally, many cities have adopted measures immediately to make cycling easier for essential workers. Different cities have created pop-up lanes to accommodate nurses, supermarket clerks, pharmacists, doctors, and those who need to do their essential activities. In the Philippines, um, advocate groups have estimated more than 5,000 new bikes and EKS purchased within just two months. If more bike shops had been open and allowed to operate during that time, that figure would have easily doubled or tripled. I'm even in contact with some of our bike suppliers and it's been we owned bikes before the, the pandemic happened. If you need more evidence that there are more cyclists, go out into any main thoroughfare right now and count how many you encounter in one hour. There are more cyclists now than ever before. We recently conducted a survey that showed many commuters will still choose to cycle even if public transport was available. And as so of yesterday, it won't be available, uh, some of them. Um, so a lot of them really will cycle. But these commuters also need the space and infrastructure to be able to get to their destination safely. And it's not just a matter of painting the road. We need a separate and protected lane put up immediately. For every day that passes, we're putting more and more commuters at risk because they have no protection against a, a fast moving car. I know for a fact that a lot of these cyclists are, are new because our efforts in Life Cycles PH has brought bikes to more than 1,400 1, frontliners in more than 7, 47 institutions. And that's just in two months. Um, nurses like Ryan from earlier are out risking their lives fighting COVID, and he's not the only one. We have government workers, food delivery persons, and street sweepers keeping our community alive. We need to ensure their safety by protecting them immediately and for the long term. We can't we can start pop-up planes right away. We should treat this as an emergency, especially because there will be limited public transportation still. So everyone, um, I think everyone has spoken uh, beforehand that we need to do something right away. We can prepare our policies and plan for more permanent infrastructure, but it shouldn't stop us from doing something now. In fact, these pop-ups could even teach us and help us with the implementation of our long-term plans. I'm talking to some LGUs on how to put up these bike lanes um, and hopefully by June 3, a lot of other LGUs would follow suit and um, celebrate World Bicycle Day by providing these pop-up lanes to keep cyclists safe. And I know it's really soon, but the, that's the point of what a pop-up is. It's fast and you can implement it right away. So um, I would like to close with this. Uh, the least we can do for the people saving our lives is to save theirs. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Kaisha. Thank you. Uh, I agree with you that uh, it is urgent and um, the most immediate really would be the pop-up bike lanes. No? Maganda talaga yung mga overhead. Lahat yan maganda. Dapat pagplanuhan yan. Pero immediately bike lanes. And before I forget, I want to make this statement now that um, maybe what we can do um, with the other advocates and also with government, of course, is that we can have a press con separately so that the media would be advised on these plans and they can help disseminate that information. Yung safety on the road, no? Baka I don't even know if there's an official guidelines on, on that. And uh, I, I speak from experience, when we would have group rides all over the country, Ang mga kasama namin doon, mga bikers na yan, sa lagay na yun, ano, bikers na sila. And yet, um, some really don't know basic etiquette. Nasa kaliwa, biglang magkocross over sa'yo, pupunta sa kanan. Yung mga ganun ba, o kaya biglang pepreno. So these are basic things that um, even some bikers do not um, practice. And I read that in other countries, they're actually having bike training. So I don't know if anyone in this group, I already mentioned it, if anyone does that, no, um, I think that was also the essence of the 
uh, statement of uh, um, Robert C., no, yung safety, but I think that is something we need to work on. But in the meantime, uh, maybe we can really promote the importance of respecting these phones. Kasi for all you know, dyan, magkaroon lang ng phone na baka may bumagsak na isa, dalawang phone, singitan pa ng motosiklo yon or ng kotse, alam mo naman dito. So, we really need to educate these people that, uh, you know, lives are at stake and these phones, these uh, bike lanes have to really be sacred, sacred, um, sacred spaces. Um, and then, uh, I will call Attorney Oposa to make a statement, no? But before yeah. that, um, before that, I was, ah, sorry, Senator Francis, yes? Yeah, yeah Senator Pia, uh, just for some uh, minor policy considerations, because, uh, I, I I think uh, MND is still listening. Ah. May I suggest, Senator Pia, that MND likewise again revive their bicycle group, uh, cycling group for enforcement purposes. That is yung mga siklista nandun, and perhaps the OTR, yung flying squad nyo na ng LTO, yung mga nanghuhuli minsan sa EDSA, pwede na rin nakabisikleta yon And with your permission, Senator Pia, I'll be writing uh, the Chief PNP to revive. Likewise, there uh, there used to be a cycle group sa Manila. Eh. So to revive likewise that cycle group, uh, yun yung dating tourist police nila, eh, mga nakabisikleta. So if we can do that, and we, if we can also advise DTI, Kasi merong abrupt rise ng prices ng bisikleta ngayon. Merong, uh, they, they should, they, they should, there should be a cap or a freeze uh, on bicycles kasi nag-aagawa ng iba. Ilang po, Senator Pia. Thank you. Hi, thank you. That's a very good intervention. Um, please include me in your letter. Kung okay sa'yo, joint na tayo kumilmat. Yes, so, yes, yan, I mean, lahat ng I mean, agencies. I, I, yes. May, may ginawa din ng tagig niyan eh uh, under Mayor Lani Cayetano. Um, I'm assuming nandiyan pa rin sila. Um, so maganda yan, pa-revive natin lahat yan. Um, and then I just before I acknowledge uh, uh, Attorney Oposa, um, yeah, I wanted to also mention, so Kaisha, thank you for the intervention that your group has been doing, including the donation of bicycles. And I also wanted to mention na the, si Dr. Tony Oposa, uh, Dr. Dalawang Tony kasi. Uh, Dr. Tony Dance uh, was also instrumental uh, when we were discussing about other issues, in particular nga tungkol pa to sa PPE, sa mga testing kits. Uh, napunta rin kami sa bikes and because of him, um, na-initiate ko din yung aking uh, uh, bike donation program through my Pilipinas in Action. Because si Tony mentioned nga that they have been doing it. I think he mentioned 250 bikes. So inumpisahan ko na rin yun. And uh, it's also in place now for frontliners to avail of. So anyway, um, ah, and then one more thing for Dr. Tony. Uh, Dr. Tony, are you still there? Actually, because I have a question for you. Yes, yes, I'm here. Um, yes, okay. Ano, um, if my staff can put back, ah, yan, sorry, nalagay nung staff ko yung Pilipinas in action, yan yung buy a bike na uh, pledge na pinapagawa namin sa mga gusto mag-support. Anyway, um, but may I ask that you pull up the slide of uh, Doc Tony on the um, on the uh, route? Was that a six-kilometer route where you said there are how many hospitals? Four hospitals. Can hospital. you just mention because yeah? Can you mention the hospitals because I think this is very relevant. Magandang iprioritization because I'd like to emphasize that I filed three bills basically: sustainable transportation, uh, bicycle act. This was all pre-COVID, and then the latest. Um, is the emergency pathways and the inspiration of the emergency pathways is really um, the group discussion that I have mentioned to you that has been going on the past weeks, no, almost two months, uh, wherein we want to prioritize the safety and the fast transportation of health workers and frontliners. Kaya pangalan nun, emergency pathways. So Doc, itong binanggit mo na meron ka ng ruta na yan, ano yung apat na ospital? Kasi... Yan yung mga gusto rin natin ipaprioritize na lugar. Even if malayo to dun sa EDSA, pwede naman to sabay-sabay gawin. Yes, eh. the four hospitals are uh, PGH in Taft Avenue. Uh, and then the Hospital ng Maynila in uh, UN. 
uh, then uh, along Rojas too. And then uh, UN Avenue, you have Manila Doctors Hospital. And then back in Taft, uh, at the corner of UN, you have the Med uh, Manila Medical Center. So, or Medical Center Manila. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. So those are four, and then that whole loop is is roughly six kilometers, tama ba? Yung yes, yung binanggit mo? it's five point eight kilometers. So the the goal is, uh, you don't have to be. Konwari ako, of course, I'm biased. My conflict of interest. I'm from PGH. Um, okay. We're never really safe until we're inside PGH, but we're hoping yes. with loops like this, you can be safe six kilometers away. Palang, uh, you already find this haven this safety net where you can bike in peace and not think if you're going to survive. Na, naiyak nga ako dun sa sinabi ni Keisha, eh, sabi niya, no? we have to protect the people who are protecting us and those are the frontliners in these hospitals. I, I can relate to that. I am not a frontliner, but just as a biking enthusiast, no? um, when I would be biking towards uh, Tagaytay coming from Alabang, um, nung wala pang nagbabike sa Danghari, napakasarap magbike nun dahil maluwag eh. So that whole trip is very pleasant. But then, nung dumami na dumami sa sakyan, and after you pass Danghari, the connecting roads are very small. It takes 30 kilometers to get to Cavite. And that whole time, para kang nagahabol lang hininga mo. And when I get to that part, hi, salamat. And imagine, I'm just doing that for biking pleasure. Yeah. No, I am not doing it as a frontliner. So my heart goes out to all these frontliners. Na pagdating mo pa doon, Mag, mag, mag surgery ka pa, titingin ka pa ng pasyente, and yet getting there alone is already so stressful. We, we need to, we want, I want to really be able to um, address that. Thank you, thank you for, for highlighting uh, that. Senator, just Pia, Senator Pia, just quickly yes. lang, uh, just to handle that problem, PGH has had to construct its own bike parking lot, uh, just to show you I know. how important it is for hospitals. I know I heard that. I heard about that. And uh, just a side story, everyone, uh, because the PGH director, of course, was uh, in the forefront of uh, making PGH COVID ready. And uh, he is also a biker, but I don't believe he has had time to bike. Binigyan ko siya ng stationary bike. Nung actually yung PGH director, gift of health ko na sa kanya. Sabi ko, park mo na yung stationary bike dyan sa opisina ko para magka-exercise ka naman. Tapos sabi ko, bakit? Di na ba ako makakapag-bike? Sabi ko, di, makakapag-bike ka pa. Pero sasakit ang ulo mo dyan sa PGH. Um, I'm giving you a stationary bike. And when COVID started, he told me na hindi niya nagagamit. Hindi niya nagagamit sobrang busy kasi ganyan talaga ang buhay ng mga doktor, mga nurses and take note ha, hindi lang naman yung mga may medical related degree, degree pati ho yung kanilang mga support yes. staff na yes. na, na, na eh, folks, even those in the administrative work, even those in the uh, cleaning services, lahat po sila kailangan natin tulungan and um, again, when I speak of frontliners, I'm also mentioning uh those not health related, those who are working for our security, our physical security, ang ating mga PNP, ang ating mga barangay, lahat po yan, kailangan natin na uh, hanapan ng way to keep them safe because uh, uh, the GCQ does not really change the, the reality that COVID is still out there. No? That's, that's what we need to make very clear. Nandyan pa rin ang uh, virus na yan. Uh, we are just making steps um, to also protect other other uh, uh, important aspects of our life, including economic uh, well-being, di ba? Kasama din yun, kaya tayo nag-opening kasi kung wala naman tayong economic concerns, eh, we could all just stay at home and we can just have these hearings, yes. but a lot of people need income and need to go out. So, gas-gas na gas-gas ko nang sinasabi yan, but it bears repeating because baka may mga excited uh, lumabas, please, wag pa rin kayo lumabas. Anyway, Doctor, doc, ah, doctor, attorney, Doctor Tony, thank you, attorney Tony. Oposa, you wanted to say something, and after you, I will call on attorney uh, Goyo Larazabal. Attorney Tony. Attorney Tony, are you around? Did we lose you? Okay, sige, good. Hello. There. Here you go. Yes. Okay. 
So I just wanted to say hello to Francis Tolentino dahil magkasama rin kami noon sa MMP Asia. And uh, yung uh, point nyo lang that I wanted to support and to reiterate, point ni Francis, ni Keisha, ni MMPA, ni DOT, ni Tony Dance, magawin na natin. Those pop-up uh, ideas are not permanent. Importante lang magawa agad. It's only, it's only an interim while we're waiting for the bigger infrastructure works. And uh, yung June 3 na start ni yung Keisha, you can move it to June 3, that will be the beginning, and we can discuss whether ituloy natin yung June 6, June 7. And But the idea is, let's start, the best thing to do, the best thing to do something is to start it. And then I uh, will also reiterate yung sinabi ni Tukayo, uh, Dr. Tony Dance, na umpisahan natin yung mga areas around hospitals, not just in the Taft Avenue, UN Avenue area, pero dyan sa mga lugar ng Makati Med, sa mga ganon, because that's the least we can do uh, for the people who are risking their lives for us. So, uh, sinong magkakala, uh, kaibigan Francis Tolentino, big time ka na, sinador ka na dyan. Honey, nice to hear your voice again. Oh, so kayo ni Pia, sigurado na, nandiyan pa si Sani Angara, nandiyan si Mitsubiri. Go na to. Yung mga pananaginip natin noon, matutuloy na talaga to ngayon. Basta nandiyan ka, Sir Tony. Areglado, boss. O oh, sige, I have to excuse myself. So we'll stay in touch. Yes, okay, sir. thank you very much. Thank you, Tony, for uh, the inspiration that you've provided to me for over a decade. Oh, but ngayon, tutuloy na talaga natin to, ha? Tuloy na. Oh, MMDA, hindi pa tayo magkakilala under Secretary San Juan. Uh, but I hope uh, I will get in touch with you soon. Nandiyan pa ba kayo sa MMDA? Opo, opo. Uh, looking forward pa to uh, your visit here or uh, anywhere we can meet pa. Oo, kasi naumpisahan na namin ni, naumpisahan na namin ni uh, Francis ito noon. Tapos tuloy-tuloy na lang. Tapos uh, pinalitan siya ni Murph, tapos nagpalit ng gobyerno. So ganun. So ngayon tuloy-tuloy tayo. Okay. Opa, opa. Maraming salamat. Okay, maraming salamat din si Attorney Tony. So now may I call on uh, Attorney Goyo Larazabal. Oh, Goyo, si Goyo. Bisaya yan. Okay. Thank you very much for having us here uh, and inviting us to be part of this discussion. No? Um, I'll put, I'll share a screen lang. Uh, Sandali lang ha. One minute. I can't share my screen. Ah, there. Okay. Um, so, I, I actually, that's, I amended that. Eh. There's something. Can I change that, please? Um, so, I'll share my screen if it's okay. So, can we do this? Uh, share. But I cannot share my screen anyway. Um, can you share my screen? Sorry. Anyway, so I'm I'm part of uh, Bicicleta. Yeah. Is it there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's that's um I there's some amendments to that eh, So. Did you uh, send it to my staff or? Yeah, but uh, she said I can share my screen, so I I made some adjustments. Um. You want to, to send it to her. you want to send if you can't share you want to send it to my staff and then I'll call on you again. Yeah, you. sure. That would be that, that, that would be okay. Better? All right. Yeah, so that let would me, be okay. Thank you. Let me call on someone else while you're fixing your screen, okay? Thank you. Um so uh let me call on attorney Raymond Fortune, president of Pinoy Road Bikers Inc. Uh Madam Chairman, uh Senator Francis Tolentino and all the attendees, good afternoon. So uh I won't delve into the matters which have already been discussed by all the others, now like Julia and Jed, as to the role of the DOTR, the DLG, the DPWH with regard to the use of bicycles on our streets. No, uh, I will not discuss about the health benefits uh, as already spoken by Dr. Dance. Instead, I will go into the matter which uh, uh, have not been talked about uh, specifically. Ano bang ba epekto nitong bicicleta? Uh, sa mismong sa mga siklista, uh, allow me to share this particular screen. No? So, Pinoy Road Bikers, uh, can people see it? 
Can people see the yes. screen? Yes, we can All see right. it. Results, yes. Okay. So, all right. So we've divided it into basically 10 groups. Now, the things which are important for the cyclists themselves. Number one would be the bike lanes. So there are some uh, pointers here on what is needed. Number two is uh, what people feel also again to, to note. Now that there is a need for bike facilities in public places, government offices, the schools, major business establishments, including the malls, banks, restaurants, and hospitals. Uh, there's a need for counterpart facilities and infrastructure programs from the private sector. No? Uh, yung mag-provide sila ng showers, ng mga lockers, no, para doon sa mga bike-to-work employees. Uh, people fail to forget no, that when you put cyclists on the road, you need to insure them. Kasi hindi may iwasan yung uh, meron talaga mga aksidente. No? So there is really a need now for probably for the government to impose uh, insurance coverage in bike events as well as to uh, for insurance companies to provide affordable life and accident insurance for recreational and bike-to-work cyclists. Uh, people also forget to understand that there is also a need now for laws governing cyclists themselves, you know, on rules on the use of helmets, seminars on traffic, the attire that they would use, uh, presumptions in cases of accident. Uh, for example, kung merong aksidente on a bike lane, uh, sino ba dapat, I mean, wala na dapat na usapan yan, ang may kasalanan dyan, yung tumapak dun sa bike lane. What if it's a cyclist and a pedestrian na nagkaroon ng problema? Uh, ano yung presumption? Okay, so we, we also hope no, that the any new law that will be passed will uh, impose increased penalties in case of traffic accidents involving cyclists. Uh, there might be, in order to induce people to go to use bicycles, uh, probably tax exemptions for those uh, uh, who would like to bike to work. Um, some of the cyclists would want the institution of cycling and triathlon in the Palarong Pambansa, the creation of velodromes, establishment of a cycling academy you know, for few potential future national teams. Samantali na natin tong pagkakataon na ito, we're in bicycles now are at the forefront. Uh, let's try now to utilize it as well in order to tap uh, potential uh, athletes no, for future Olympic Games, maybe, or even uh, membership dun sa mga world tour teams no, uh, all over. Um, there is There are several bills in Congress, uh, especially that of Congressman Tino, or, or which uh, mandates the, a one-meter away distance by motorists to cyclists. Uh, and penalties, therefore. We would like sana na magkaroon na talaga ng regular na celebration of World Bicycle Day every June 3. And lastly, and this is the most important, uh, in order to make the bicycles themselves uh, attractive to more people, I think there's a need to reduce the expense or the cost of, the, of acquiring the bicycles. So if it's possible for government now to come out with a law reducing the taxes for bicycle parts. Uh, last two points. No? Um, I'd like to share this concept of presumed liability. Uh, there are a lot of laws that we have wherein there are legal presumptions, disputable presumptions in cases of accident. And in pagdating sa bisikleta, sana meron sanang uh, law on presumed liabilities. If it's a motor vehicle versus a bicycle, uh, normally the less uh, uh, the less vulnerable na na vehicle is the one who should be presumed to be at fault. If it's a, a bicycle versus a, versus a pedestrian, it is the cyclist who is at fault. Okay. Lastly, uh, just one last point. Um, yung the possible use of EDSA for bicycles, uh, well, being a motorist as well, I won't want to impose this at this time. Uh, and daming mga kalya na pwede naman daanan ng mga bisikleta, uh, wag na sanang makihati pa yung mga siklista sa EDSA because uh, it is such a busy roadway. Uh, I would like to prefer that uh, we just leave it to the, mo the regular motorists and chakay mga buses. That's all, uh, Senator PN. Good afternoon. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Attorney Fortune. Um, let me now uh, call back uh, Attorney Goyo Arazabal. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Senator. Thank you very much for having us here and for inviting us. Um, uh, I don't. I want. I don't want to talk about uh, the the health issue, like and other topics that were discussed earlier. But I would like to discuss, in behalf of the Bicicleta Filipinas Coalition, four topics which has to be addressed and looked at. Um, 
in in developing a cycling culture in the Philippines. Uh, it's a PDF file, which I sent. Um, there are four things that has to be looked at. One is the first. It was already discussed. It's we use the, the acronym ICE. It's infrastructure, culture, which includes mindset, environment, and education. I'll just briefly look go at this one at the time, one by one. Infrastructure involves not only public infrastructure but also private infrastructure. Yes, you can build roads, you can build paths for cyclists, but if the cyclist will not feel there's any incentive for him to ride a bicycle to work, meaning say there's lockers, safe parking, showers, and financial incentives, then there's less chance that he will want to do that. So that goes hand in hand with public infrastructure. Second is the culture and mindset. Uh, many people look at cycling as a as a as a tool for sports and leisure. Eh? Um, and when people ride a bicycle to work, the first question is that, why are you riding a bicycle to work? Wala bang pera pang bili ng motorcyclo or kotse? That's why you're riding a bicycle. They don't realize that there are benefits if you ride a bicycle to work, including health, um, to yourself, for health, to the community, it's less pollution, it, it lessens traffic congestion, and it eases, it, it makes, it basically improves the, the lifestyle of people because people tend to be healthier. Third is E, environment. Um, in the Philippines, it's much hotter to ride a bicycle as compared to other other countries in Europe or in um, in the U.S. Northern America because face it, it's hotter, it rains, and there's more pollution. However, um, that can change. That can change if more people ride the bicycle to work. I mean, you say there's less pollution. If it's hotter to buy, ride the bicycle to work, the one of the key things we should look at is. The people who ride the bicycle to cons for you know construction workers who ride the bicycle to work, they usually bike to work early in the morning where there's not it's not so hot and there's not so much vehicular traffic. So if you look at them, um, they sweat less because the the pace of cycling is to work is slower and there's less vehicles. It's it's not as hot as it's, it's cooler as compared to cycling like eight o'clock or nine o'clock in the morning. E, the last is education. Education involves education for cyclists, motorists, and pe pedestrians. Um, the, the, the advocates at Bicicleta Filipinas Coalition have been pushing that you cyclists, every cyclist has to be an ambassador of the sport. Um, a lot of cyclists will say that they have to be respected by the pedestrians and motorists, but it's a two-way street. Cyclists has to demand respect, you have to also give respect. So cyclists has to respect, have to respect the motorists, has to respect pedestrians. I got into a discussion one time when we we advocated that, you know, cyclists has to follow rules of the road. One commented that no, rules of the road don't apply to cyclists, but it should apply to only motorists on who use the road. That's That's a wrong mindset. Yeah. Dapat when, when cyclists use the road, they have to be follow the, the stoplights. Because even last week when I was coming home from a meeting, I saw at least two cyclists who ran a red light in the evening without any lights, without any helmet. So parang, uh, you know, it, it, it sends the wrong message that a lot of cyclists, including myself, no, demand for respect, demand that they be treated well, but... Some cyclists don't follow the basic rules of the road, and that will create problems. So the guys, advocates of Firefly Brigade, the guys in Davao, uh, the guys in Iloilo, what they're doing now is they are advocating and they're doing programs for seminars for cyclists. So, maraming bumibili ng bisikleta ngayon na baguhan, di ba? They buy a bicycle. They can ride it right away because they don't. You're not required to have a license or a permit to ride a bicycle. However, they forget that you have to have the basic knowledge and tools to be able to ride safely. How to ride a bicycle? How to shift gears? Marami don. They don't have know how to shift their gears in bicycles. Third, they don't even know how to wear a helmet. If they have a helmet, they don't even know how to wear it properly. Fourth, they don't know how to follow rules and regulations on the road. So that's why advocates now are promoting education 
to make sure that cyclists ride safely and responsibly. Responsibly. So I think it's a it's a long process to develop cycling culture in the Philippines. But if we use Monic the acronym ICE, infrastructure, culture, environment, and education, a holistic approach to promoting cycling, I think there's a chance it will succeed in the future. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for that. I, I like that it makes it easier nga naman to remember. And uh, may I take this opportunity to call on all the um, bike advocates, no? Uh, earlier uh, in the chat group, uh, Julia commented about the, num the various uh, cycling organizations that do workshops and training. But I don't know if anyone can answer my question now. If there is a, uh, I don't know if there's an, inter there must be an international, no? An international guide. I mean, I know the basics, no? Like, okay. the basic dyan is nasa kaliwa ka. Huwag ka naman lumipat sa kanan na mayroong mga nasa harap mo, di ba? Parang, how basic is that? And then like, like uh, Attorney Goyo said, um, akala natin di tayo covered ng stoplight. Di tama yun. Covered tayo ng stoplight. Kung stop, stop, di ba? But what they do in some countries, and I think um, I, I saw uh, an illustration of this, um, some you can even go ahead. But that has to be made clear to all motorists, di ba? To all people using the road. Kasi yung mga motorists, kung hindi nila alam na yun ang practice, eh pwede kang pumunta sa harap nila, oh, businahan ka, sagasaan ka pa. So I'm just saying na baka may initiative ang ibang groups dyan to come together with the rules para sooner than later we have something. Did you want to react to that, uh, Goyo? Yeah, there, um, there are... Uh, UCI is one organization, World International Cycling Union is one. There's International Mountain Bicycling Association, it's based in the U.S. And locally, there are some organizations who have been active for a long time. Uh, I understand that right now, some are making instructional videos that they can upload on YouTube to instruct fellow cyclists no? in the local dialect because there are many instruction man, man, materials. It's English or so you marami dun, they, they might not fully comprehend the instruction. So it's a work in progress, but there are some advocates doing it now and siguro in the next few days it will be uploaded. But if there's any way we can help, uh, we'd be happy to, to share our insights with, with your committee. Um, Thank you. Actually, that will be too much detail naman for the law, pero if it is a rules oh, and regulations, oh. but I would like to know. I would like to know so that we can, um, uh, you know, support each other and, and get the right agencies uh, to promote this, to adopt, to adopt, and then to promote it. So, um, uh, if I can, if I can just add, sorry, if I can just add, maybe DepEd would be a a agency that might you might want to tap because you know a lot of. A lot of people who are starting to bike now are medyo middle age na. But if you train, if you in incorporate it in the curriculum when school regularly starts, no? um, on how to ride the bicycle responsibly, um, what will happen is that um, um, it's easier to, sorry, <laughs> sorry, it's, it's easier to, it's easier to have responsible cyclists on the road if Ba kung bata pa lang sila, tinuturuan na sila anong basics ng cycling, anong do's and don'ts. Mga seminars sa mga grade school or high school students. Noted, noted. Thank you. Okay, so let me now call on... Um... Don, let me check. Okay, thank you. Um, let me call on Jan Daniel Belmonte from um, Cycling Matters. And then after Jan Daniel would be Roger Valiana. Good afternoon, I'm Chair. Uh, uh, Senator Pia Maitano. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic has heightened the urgency of our country's long-standing need for a resilient and sustainable mode of transport. The bicycle has been thrust into the limelight as it allows our frontline workers to get to work and serve the people. We are at the crossroads and we stand to gain a future where mobility can be more accessible to a greater number of people. 
The case for promoting cycling and walking as modes of transport is well established. The World Health Organization's Charter on Transport, Environment, and Health cites clear evidence showing benefits to the environment, physical health, and psychosocial well-being, and road safety. There is huge potential for bike transport in the Philippines. For example, in uh, national capital region, the size is actually very suitable for bike commuting, even for people who commute from outlying areas such as Rizal, Bulacan, Laguna, and Cavite. I've, I've personally met a cyclist who bikes every day from Bulacan to Pasay to get to work, and he enjoys it. The topography of the area is also relatively flat, even when considering transitions from lower areas such as Marikina. Our climate is also predictable. Temperatures do not go into extremes as in other parts of the world where they experience hotter summers and colder winters. A rainy season is not an insurmountable barrier to cycling either. What actually makes bike transport difficult are man-made factors. One example of this is our perception of bicycles as a mode of transport, and the government is complicit in perpetuating this problem. While there have been attempts to include cycling in the transport agenda, the mindset, attitude, language, knowledge, and treatment of bike projects has resulted in the problematic implementation of projects. For the most part, investments that have been made on bicycle infrastructure have so far fallen short at convincing Filipinos to consider cycling as a viable mode of transport. Accommodating their needs throughout their journey on a bicycle is critical to the success of any bike-related project. The needs of a cyclist go beyond their journey on a bicycle. End-of-trip facilities are important. Establishment and implementation of secure bicycle parking, while they're present in some, is not uniform across all cities. In Quezon City, for instance, while there is an ordinance stipulating bicycle parking for major business establishments, it is not strictly enforced. Other facilities, such as shower rooms and offices, are worth considering and implementing as well. Recognizing all of these considerations, our main recommendations are First, that cycling transport be designated as a primary mode of transport and prioritized over motor vehicles in our road design. We don't mean to say that we shouldn't allocate space for cars, but rather the basis of allocating space should be whether it works for pedestrians and cyclists first. If anything should be prioritized at, at, at grade, it should be people and bikes, and the option to stay at grade should always be available. Thinking of bikes as an alternative mode of transport leaves too much ambiguity and ambivalence about their role in our society. While there will be appropriate occasions for other modes of transport, such as private vehicles and public transport, cycling should be accessible and safe for those who choose to ride bikes. Second, that the minimum requirements um, to make bikeways viable for transport be set by government in terms of coherence, directness, and safety. Coherent by creating a network of the dedicated bike lanes for safe and fast travel while asserting the right of cyclists to be safe on roads where separated bike lanes are not possible. Cycling should be made possible for a full spectrum of purposes, whether that's transportation, sport, and whatnot. It should also be direct. Bikeways should be as direct as possible because writing, routing cyclists around long circuitous paths makes cycling less viable for many. Detours that are negligible for motorized vehicles affect non-motorized travel more. And in terms of safety, dedicated bike lanes should be created where possible, even at the cost of space currently allocated to motorized vehicles. If such lanes are not possible, then speed limits should be imposed on motorized vehicles on roads that are shared with cyclists. Traffic calming infrastructure can also be used to force motorized vehicles to drive at a more manageable speed. Third, that studies on local bicycle transport be conducted to produce data that can guide goal setting. If we are able to determine the number of cyclists that travel, we can carry out evidence-based interventions to make cycling more palatable to those who have reserv reservations about it or improve riding conditions to support those who already ride their bikes. Fourth, that end-of-trip facilities be made part of the bike infrastructure agenda. These include bike safe bike parking, shower facilities, and hydration areas for cyclists. Fifth, that bimodal modes of bike commuting be promoted in form of cargo base and racks for bikes and trains and buses. Madam Senator, we believe that any piece of legislation in support of the bicycle as a mode of transport should specify these recommendations as the minimum requirements in order for cycling to become a truly viable and effective mode of transport in the Philippines. Our leaders and our fellow, fellow citizens here and outside of this hearing right now have suggested several ways for us to improve infrastructure. We just need to be decisive and really take action. We thank the Senate for this opportunity and we look forward to witnessing the new and better normal at the soonest possible time.
Thank you. Um, we appreciate th that input. Um, so may I now call on uh, Roger Valena, President of Pindak Bisdak Cebu Folding Bike Society and editor of Sunstar Super Balita Cebu. Is Roger Valiana around? Our secretariat, is he around or should I call on someone else? So let me call on uh, Brian Ku, president of Grab Philippines. And then uh, if uh, Mr. Roger Valiana comes back later on, we can call him. Brian, are you around? Hi, Senator. Hi, Senator Pia. Hello, hello, welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank you to everyone um, here. Um, let me just share a bit of statistics uh, that we have on Grab uh, for the purpose of this topic and the use of bicycles as a means of uh, employment. So under our Grab Food and Grab Express platform, um, we have around 7% of the active delivery partners are cyclists or walkers. Uh, so, so these, these um, partners comprise of, of around a similar percentage in terms of their contribution to the deliveries, also at around 7%. Now, if we compare this to the motorcycle delivery partners, they travel half the distance of a motorcycle delivery partner, but are, take around the same uh, delivery time, uh, which, which means you know, adding safe, safer roads and, and better, um, better paths for them could help reduce this and increase their utilization. But if we look at the earnings of a cyclist compared to a motorcycle uh, vehicle rider, despite the lower utilization of a cyclist, they earn um, at around the same rate of a motorcycle rider. Uh, and uh, based on our data, they earn around 44% higher than minimum wage. Um, and the top areas for them are around Manila, uh, USD, oh, yes. Espana, uh, QC, oh. South Triang uh, in South oh, Triangle, yes. and Erod, uh, Pasig around Valle Verde, Makati, uh, and Makati CB, Makati Bell Air Poblacion, and Makati. Okay. Sorry, so, can I ask other people to turn off their mics, please? Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, so we believe that, you know, um, okay. being able to offer okay better a better road network for cyclists can allow more of these individuals to join our platform um and you know it's a low cost of joining the platform but they can still make a very decent living uh with the use of these uh, bikes thank you thank you sorry i i got distracted when you were saying when you compare when you were comparing the income of uh, bikers compared to motorcycle riders what was it Yes, so the bikers have a lower utilization compared to motorcycle riders. So given the same number of hours, uh, they accept less orders. However, the income disparity is not that large. So motorcycle riders would be able to earn up to 75% above minimum wage. Bike riders would be able to earn up to 45% above minimum wage. What is the reason for that? Um, is the public not aware that uh, it can be delivered by bicycle? Are they not tapped? Um, is it within your structure that you limit if it's a certain distance? Can you can you comment on that? Yes, so we do limit the uh, bike riders uh, from distance so that the delivery does not take too long. Of course. Um, so uh, as I mentioned a while ago, the average distance for a cyclist is around 1.5 kilometers that he delivers to. Well, it's double that of the uh, uh, of the motorcycle uh, rider. The delivery awesome. time is around the same, um, even if it's half the distance. So that that's your standard. Like for bikers, the average is three kilometers. Now you said double three kilometers, and for bikers, it's one point five. Correct, correct. That's how the system allocates um, to keep the uh, average delivery time the same. But as a biker. Um, I can tell you that um, three kilometers is nothing naman. That, that's also just a few minutes. No? But I guess it depends also on where you are, right? Correct. So, so, so all I the mean, discussion... Is, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. All the discussion around creating uh, specific pathways for bikers so that they don't have to you know, worry about their safety would definitely yeah. help in speeding up their travel time 
and uh, potentially increase the radius that they cover and, and lead to higher income as well. But do people actually get a choice? Like, like um, is, there, is there anything in your apps that gives them a choice as to uh, deliver this more sustain sustainably on a bicycle? Is that something that you could be promoting also? It's something that we could definitely look at. Um, however, right now, the app allocates based on the distance between the okay. person who ordered and the restaurant. Yeah, I'd like I'd like to push for that because in areas uh, where where again your concern would be addressed, not the safety, where we're always um, uh, concerned about that as well. Um, but for example, like uh, Ayala Labang, no, my my main home is in Ayala Labang. Um, I live I live about one kilometer from the gate. So if I order from PC, um, I, I guess automatically I'm pwedding bicycle, no, because within one point five, right? Where so my mom. Then my mom's house would be around um, 2.5 kilometers further inside the village. So that's almost 4 kilometers. Hindi na siya pasok doon. Pero kung may biker naman na willing, and that's where uh, you'll have this uh, network of bikers, I believe a lot of them would support it naman. So if there's a way that uh, you can start studying that on how we can support also these bikers. Kasi I can already tell you that's safe naman dito. No? I, I, uh, the guidelines here for now under MECQ is that pag food delivery pwede. Pero yun nga, your system will not allow them to deliver much farther than where I live. No? I live close to uh, the La Salle, uh, La Salle Zobel. So yeah. beyond that, malay, medyo malayo na. But marami, marami pang ibang areas na gano. So just something for you to consider. Thank you. Thank yes, you very Senator, much. Yes, Thank you for the feedback. Thank you. Um, and and I, I just want to make sure and say that uh, let's keep the the communications because um, these are businesses and I'm sure there are many out there maybe in future hearings for those who are aware of how we can also uh, make uh, give more opportunities uh, for bikers the only the only income opportunities that I can think of offhand are similar to the to the platform that you have Brian and then uh, the athletes who are professional athletes no? they use their biking skill to earn money in the bente bente or whatever um, I don't really know if it's uh, institutionalized that they use bikers for delivery. Eh, no? Unlike in New York City, right? Yes. There was a study yes. that showed yes. that the fastest way to get around is to bike in New York City. But the time I was living there, I would never bike in New York City. So, uh, parang, parang know, life, life uh, uh, hazard yata mag bikes in New York then. I don't know. I don't know how much improved it is, it is now. Anyway, um, so thank you, Brian. Um, I'd like to acknowledge Julia again. Um, Julia would like to make a statement or react to something. I just wanted to touch upon what some of the others have been saying. It's very important that we do have some minimum standards. As you can see, um, cyclists are, are, you know, we know what they need and we know what kind of infrastructure they need to be protected, to be safe and have the most direct way of going to where they need to go. Um, if we leave guidelines too general, we run the risk of having implementation such as one meter width, such as rerouting on a very, um, you know, long, direct, direct, uh, indirect routes going to critical areas, uh, not having the proper markings, not having the proper separation. So I think it's extremely uh, critical at this time that any of the bills and the IRRs that will be included have those very specific minimum standards and even recommendations that the LGUs can build on that they can use as a basis to establish budgets, establish new active mobility offices, um, be able to put the resources, both financial and human, into making sure that these are sustainable and these are a sustainable infrastructure for the for the years to come. Even though we're making immediate more short-term investments right now. I just really want to reiterate that because I know we have MMDA, we have DOTR, maybe we have someone from DILG. And uh, I think that the cycling community, the planning community, um, the transportation planners are very ready to contribute that kind of insight to be adopted in, um, in law so that that can be basically disseminated and used across all agencies and for the LGUs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Um, yeah, I also want to add something um, that Julia had mentioned to me earlier because we have had discussions with Grab before. Um, for the cycling enthusiasts out there, uh, apparently there's really a lot of unmet, unmet uh, need um, as far as uh, 
um, delivery by bicycles are concerned. So the business opportunities are really out there. And uh, I'm happy to hear that and to be reminded of that because um, this, is the good, this is the time now for uh, our people to have income opportunities and something as basic as a, a very good biking skills, decent and uh, safe biking skills could provide jobs for people. Thanks for reminding me of that, Julia, also. Um, I'm about to wrap up, but if anyone needs, wants to make a follow-up uh, uh, question to any other speaker or any um, comments, um, please message uh, in the message box so my staff can alert me. But in the meantime, um, I would like to share a photo of uh, our uh, uh, road that was newly built uh, along the um, lake of Taguig City. So uh, this is one photo, but there's also one with me in it. Um, anyway, I'd like to point out to everyone that uh, if you look to the left, uh, no, not that one, please, uh, Taguig, please. That's EDSA, actually. Okay, so this is Taguig City, and to the left is uh, the Laguna Lake. Uh, if you see those students, they are actually walking on the, walk, on the walkway, the walk path. Uh, it's a dedicated sidewalk, no? So people um, walk there. Sometimes they push strollers. And then where I'm biking is the dedicated bike lane. And then after that is uh, the structure. I don't know what, what's the official name for this kind of structures that separate you, uh, physical barriers, permanent barriers that separates the cycling lane, the biking lane from the road. And you can see the road on the right. So I believe this is the only and the first um, uh, bike lane in the country that's physically segregated. I may be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, maybe the first in Metro Manila at least. Um, but that is how it has been built. Um, BPWH took the lead with this in cooperation uh, with um, the Gig City. So this is really the dream, no? Um, that we have protected bike uh, lanes like this. Um, I always tell my colleagues in government, yung mga LGU na uh, lalo na yung mga hindi pa city or yung mga cities na hindi pa ganun ka-develop, that's always the opportunity when uh, you have a young uh, LGU because you can really make these kind of changes early on. It's harder to make these changes uh, in the heart of metropolitan areas. But um, today we have that opportunity uh, through the collective efforts of everyone. And um, I'd like to also... Um, I'd also like to um, mention, I, I think I, I passed, I briefly mentioned it, MMDA and uh, DOTR are still here, no? Um, I wanted to point out that, uh, can we please also identify other areas? Dr. Tony Dance mentioned yung sa Manila, paano tayo makakatulong doon? And then yung sa Taguig nga, di ba? Kasi... Um, we have EDSA and then we have C5. And uh, we need to also consider how we can identify certain stretches to be dedicated bike lanes also for C5 because the rest of Taguig and then yung parting nandun would be, I believe, parts of Makati and nandun din. Um, and then obviously, uh, those coming further south, no, Paranaque, um, maybe even uh, Pasig. Uh, will need to cross over dun sa C5. So we need to explore. I'm not aware that they have included that in the preliminary studies, but may I get a response from DOTR and uh, MMDA about the use of C5 as well? Uh, yes, pa, Senator. We will uh, get in touch with uh, the LGUs uh, for their uh updates po on, on on the ordinances uh regarding uh bike lanes that uh if they have been uh uh implemented and if not uh, to push for the implementation and if possible to make new ones that will uh, be uh, more recept more uh, in in coherent with uh, the present requirements no uh, as far as the covid uh, pandemic is concerned Okay, thank you for that. Um, yes, I, I can tell you now that uh, si Mayor Lino Cayetano, my brother, 
was asking me to raise this point. So please get in touch with them because um, they are very much keen on supporting this, but they need that link from that part of Taguig to cross over towards papunta sa BGC and other parts of um, Metro Manila. So I, I will also indicate, uh, advise him of that. Um, Asek, uh, Mark, um, can I call on you? All? Can I give you the floor? Mark De Leon. Okay, while we're waiting for Mark, I just want to point out that uh, I know for a fact that Iloilo has dedicated bike lanes also, and I think it is also protected bike lanes. Um, hindi naman to competition, ano, pero from what I know, it is four kilometers long. And the gig for now is five kilometers, but I believe it was meant to be 10 kilometers, so baka work in progress. And I'm not sure then yung sa Iloilo kung tuloy-tuloy din yan. But um, I'm already happy with uh, to be able to share this news, no? Yeah. All of you. So, Mark, are you there? Yep. Yep. Uh, Senator Pia, on the point yes. of uh, DOTR, uh, we already have a plan for uh, the establishment of one kilometer of green trees over Metro Manila. We just, uh, Sorry, I'm uh, going to chat with you. Okay, ulit lang. Turn off my uh, okay. video. Turn off the video. Oh, sige. Okay. Yes. 120 kilometers of greenways is already ready for uh, Metro Manila. We just need sustainable funding for this uh, initiative. Ano? Um, ma -ma -kwento ko lang po, ano? During the past, we have a sustainable source of funding through the road board. But unfortunately, na abolish nga po yung road board na yan, ang pinagkukunan ng pondo na yan is through the motor vehicle users charge. And 10.5% of uh, the motor vehicle users charge this environmentally sustainable transportation. In fact, uh, through that funding, nagkaroon kami ng environmentally sustainable transportation unit. So with the abolition of the road board, naging collateral damage po yung uh, unit na yan. Na sustainable funding. So if you can just uh, identify po from uh, possible sources like uh, the new train law or uh, collecting excise taxes on alcohol and uh, cigarettes and also for the fuel, baka pwede po natin maka building uh, source and build more of our basic infrastructure and more sustainable transportation solutions. So yun lang po, just to uh, keep you updated na nandiyan na po tayo sa plano na yan, we just need uh, some funding support. Okay, thank you. Noted naman yan. Sige, we, anyway, you'll be invited in our technical working group now so we can discuss this further. Um, pero Mark, ano din yung sa both for MMDA and for DOTR, yung for um, pop-up planes, no? yung ating temporary but of course as safe as possible pop-up planes, um, pa-explore naman please nung C5 na kasi nga maraming ang bayan na dun sa area na yun, including yung bayan ko ng Taguig, eh, hindi makakatawid dun yung mga bike, di ba? So, hindi sila makakalink dun sa main, um, main uh, pathways, which is for now, um, EDSA. So kindly look into that, please. Yes, ma'am. We will definitely coordinate uh, uh, the uh, for this uh, uh, bike lanes, ma'am. All right. So I think um, we've covered everybody who needs to speak. May I just quickly ask my staff to message me if there is somebody who was not able to, to speak. Um, sandali, ah. um, I think I think uh, Ed Veslino of Arca Bikers Club is here. Did you, I'm acknowledging your presence. Did you have a statement to also say? Galing po Bikers Club po namin sa Taguig to. Anyone else? So on that note, um, I will just suspend this hearing for now. <coughs> Um, are you there? Okay, so wala na. So I was Yes, who is this? This yes, uh, Ed, Ed Veslinio okay. from America Bikers Club. Yes, may statement po kayo? Opo, uh, mabilis lang po ito. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Senator Pia. Uh, the last time we we ride is nung... Uh, Galing tayong Pasay papuntang Luneta. 
At saka yan nung magkakasama tayo na nasa likod mo kami sa sa ating bike lanes tagi. Yes. Magandang mm-hmm. hapon po sa inyo lahat. Sure, oo. Opo, opo. Mabilis lang po ito. Uh, ang aming pong posisyon ay uh, regarding sa, sa bicycling, eh, may kinalaman sa health, economy, environment, biker safe pathways, at yung sana suporta ah, para sa mas maraming mga namimisikleta na magkaroon ng kooperatiba. Yung pong bikers promotion, napaka-importante, kasama dun yung education. Uh, alam natin na ang balance ay importanteng-importante between health, economy, and environment. And it shall be always on the priority list. Health, yung healthy lifestyle through biking, nakakapag-contribute na malaki sa ating uh, ekonomiya. Uh, yung mobility, nakakapag-create ng mabilis na productivity among workers. Yung ating environment na kung saan tayo nakatira, eh dapat laging malusog. Kasi kung sakitin ito, pati yung mga taong nakatira dito magiging sakitin din. Kami sa Taguig, meron kaming bike lane, malapit kami sa lake, and we enjoy biking. Uh, pero yung lahat ng enjoyment na yan, hindi natin mararanasan kung hindi tayo safe. Bikers must be safe and all the pathways na dedicated sa safety ay dapat available. Uh, alam naman ni Senator P yan kasi <laughs> lagi, namang, lagi naman namin nakakasama sa biking yan at nakikita ko rin na laging nagbibisikla ta, kahit nasa Ayala Labang. Alam na alam ni uh, Senator kung ano yung pakiramdam ng hindi ligtas na pamimisikleta. Pero napaka-importante po ng education sa namimisikleta. Sa ngayon po, ang datos natin sa Pilipinas, mas marami ang may hirap na tao. Ibig lamang sabihin, mas kukonti ang po pwedeng makabili ng mga four wheels na kumukonsumo ng gasolina. Ano po ba yung sinasabi ko tungkol sa environment? Ang environment po natin na pupulyut. At ang pollution ay nanggagaling kung saan-saan. Pero ang mas marami po ay mga nanggagaling doon sa mga factory at sa mga sasakyang nilalagay natin ng gatong. Yun pong productivity, bakit ko nasasabi, kung mas konti po ang merong sakit, yun pong dedication ng ating funding, hindi na pupunta rin sa reactive measures ng ating Department of Health or even ng ating mga ibang mga executives. Yung pondo, mapapapunta na lang doon sa, sa prevention. Mahirap naman po yung kung kailan mamamatay na, saka lang magre-react. Mas maganda po yung napiprevent natin. Healthier environment, healthier economy, mas mainam po yan. Uh, yun pong uh, biking promotion na banggit kanina, napaka-importante po nun. Nabanggit po ng isang resource person na yung ating source ng uh, tamang edukasyon para sa mga namimisikleta, napaka-importante. Yun yung uh, Department of Education, napakalaki pong bagay na maitutulong. Kasi at early age time possible, mas mabuti po na mas maraming natuturuan. Yun naman pong uh, tungkol doon sa Bikers Cooperative Sen. Alam nyo naman po, napa, napakaraming mga namimisikleta, mas mahihirap na tao. Ngayon, magiging available po yung mga bisikleta yan kung magkakaroon ng mga kooperatiba ng mga namimisikleta na, maka, na magiging affordable through the help of the cooperative na makaprocure, makabili sila ng bisikleta at maging productive din kasama ng agos ng ating uh, pamumuhay. Mas maraming na may bisikleta, mas maraming nakakagalaw ng mga workers na nagiging productive yung, sec- yung sektor na ito. So, yung po mga puntong yun, uh, napipremise lang doon sa halos tatatlo, ulitin ko po lamang, uh, health, Importante, biking is one good option. Economy, mobility can be defined easier by moving people, not the vehicle. Mobility means greater productivity and therefore more revenues and savings. Marketplace and all its channels can be more active and respiratory and participatory. Revenues and savings can be converted to a more productive smallest barangay, municipality, city, or even provincial. Some it all. Buong, buong nasyon po natin mga kinabang dito. Magiging mabilis ang galaw ng pamilihan magmula sa barangay hanggang sa pinakamalalaking syudad. Dahil mobile po yung mga tao. Dati kalabaw lang at saka baka. 
Pero ngayon, idagdag natin ang bisikleta, mas mabilis si gamitin. Environment, kung saan tayo nakitira, dapat nating alagaan. At ang bisikleta, kapag sinakyan natin, walang pollution tayong ma makukuha. So, mas maraming tao, magiging mas malusog, mas kokonti ang gagasto sa ng gobyerno sa pagpapagamot. And this bill is very timely. Siguro etong COVID na to, <laughs> ang isa sa nagpupus. Eh, hindi naman natin gusto na magkaroon ng ganito. Pero ngayon, nabubukas yung ating mata kasi ang, is ang bisikleta pala, ang isa sa pinaka-importanting bihikulo na sasandalan natin sa ganitong pagkakataon. Okay. Uh, Senator Bia, kaming lahat nasa likod mo. Salamat po. Salamat, salamat. Salamat po, Ed. So, um, that's it, no, everyone, for the speakers today. Thank you very much for the time that you've given us. Um, I will suspend this hearing. Uh, we will dissect. Uh, everyone uh, for the resource person and to the committee secretariat and to my team. Thank you. Good, good afternoon to all.